I have to put record here. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry about that. Okay, <clears throat> so we, we, we are done with the registration. And then now is my, my, my session, a short one. And then we will go straight to the presentation session. Uh, the schedule is provided there. We, we, may, we may want to adjust a little bit if you want to, no problem. And then after that, we will have Q&A. So we expected to finish somewhere around, you know, 2.30 or earlier. All right, since we have two uh, presenters are not able to attend. So maybe we, we can finish a little bit earlier. But uh, we have, a, 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 you know, better opportunity for Q&A for that matter, you know. We can, we can have more time for Q&A later. Okay, so these are the... <clears throat> Presentation schedule. Um, <clears throat> the first presenter will be Dr. Ahmad Tamidi from University Kebangsaan Malaysia. So actually, Dr. Ahmad has got four papers, four papers to present. So I divided this into two slots for him at the beginning of the presentation session and also at the end of the presentation session. Uh, okay. I hope Dr. Ahmad is, is okay with this. And then, uh, Adele will, will follow through after that uh, together with your, with your co-authors. Uh, Adele from Prita Harapan University. Uh, the title of your paper is actually the, the use of uh, peer victimization in non-grammar television program to gain rating. Okay? So you take this as case study of a private television station or private television stations in Indonesia. Okay. Oh, before that, let me ask, uh, which one of the private uh, television station is in Indonesia? Are there many? Yeah, uh, uh, there's um, many television in Indonesia. It's mostly like uh, 17 or 18 uh, that uh, that's the famous. But we only uh, uh, interview uh, two people from the biggest uh, television. Uh, we cannot say that. The name of the televisions, but we interviewed two of the biggest, yeah, the biggest of uh, TV stations in Indonesia. I see. So uh, Metro TV is a private uh, station, right? Is it Metro TV or? Yes, Metro TV. Metro TV, and yeah. also there's a, uh, there's a lot of uh, private television in Indonesia that yeah. the government have is only uh, TVRI, if you know. TVRI only. The TV, the other one yeah. is the TV one. Is that the TV one? TV one is also a private uh, TV stations. Oh, okay, yeah. alright, okay. But there's a lot of uh, the new, new and um, uh, small private television stations in Indonesia. So right. we take the two biggest. <laughs> okay, no problem. All right. <clears throat> after after Adele uh, presented her paper together with the with the co-authors, and then uh, we have Bu Katarina Susi to continue the presentation. Uh, on the paper strategies of the BKKBN. Okay, this is a short form for some something for socializing family planning program for Generation Z or Generation Z in Indonesia through Instagram. Okay. Next come Dr. Nasirah. But Dr. Nasirah uh, has told me earlier, late last night, that she would not be able to uh, join the uh, the session, the conference today. So. <clears throat> she will not be able to present. She will be presenting uh, her paper in uh, Bahasa Malaysia. Okay, I think most of you from Indonesia will be able to understand this one. Um, <clears throat> but I have requested her earlier actually uh, to give uh, also the, the, the to deliver also the presentation in English. You know, mix of Bahasa Malaysia and English so that uh, all the participants can get. Uh, can get the message from the, from from her paper, okay? But unfortunately, she she she's not able to attend today, right? And the next one is Dr. Grace Chan from uh, yeah. City University of Macau. So Dr. Grace will be uh, presenting a, a paper title "Predicting Psychological Benefit in Green for Airlines Passengers Effect Organization Corporate Image to Switching Decision," okay? And then after that, we have Dinara, Dinara to present uh, for the paper entitled The Use of Cancel Culture to Raise Social Awareness on YouTube. Uh, Dr. Haiba Kaul 
supposedly to take after Dinara, but she is also not able to make it today. All right. And again, Dr. Ahmad Tamidi will present the ne his next two papers at, at the end of this session. All right. <clears throat> we also have uh, additional two uh, listeners, Azian Shahira and also Kairina Aisha from University of Malaya, Kuala Lumpur. Uh, they come to join the e-conference to listen and observe uh, to our presentation and 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 uh, conference going on. Okay. So <clears throat> to take note is the time allocated for speakers for presentation is about 10 to 12 minutes, but considering we uh, minus two presenters, maybe, you know, plus minus 15 minutes, that is, that is fine with us, okay? <clears throat> so, the, the most important thing is uh, what next after this conference, okay? So, <clears throat> there are four main things that, that, that we will be dealing with after a conference finishes. So the first one is the conference certificates. All right, the conference certificate will be uh, provided to participants who register as a presenter. Either they come to our venue of presentation. If it is face-to-face -face presentation, normally we will, uh, you know, uh, after my uh, welcoming address, we will call upon uh, to the floor the participant to pick up the certificate and then we take pictures you know but now we are doing e-conference we cannot do that yeah so <clears throat> instead for you who attended as presenter uh, e-conference and also a presenter who will submit their video presentation will be pro will be provided with the certificates okay it is an e-certificate in pdf format uh, which will be emailed to you all right within a week after today the second one is uh, for those who submitted their video for publication in our YouTube, we will publish that video also within a week. But normally between you know one to three days, we are done with it already. Next, your paper. Your paper will be published in proceeding. We call it conference proceeding journal. Yeah? Hey, conference <laughs> proceeding book, I'm sorry. Okay. So that should be within a month from today. Normally, we should be done with within a week or maybe uh, just slightly after a week. That again depends on the, on all authors actually basically have submitted their full paper to us. Um, we know that uh, in, in, in some cases, some author actually, they join the conference, they pay the fee, they submit the abstract, but they have not submitted the full paper yet actually. All right? Uh, some of them are like that. So paper may come probably three days after the conference. So if that is the case, we still have to wait uh, for their papers so that uh, we can have all the complete set of papers submitted by the participants in our conference proceeding book. This conference proceeding book carry a uh, ISBN number. Okay. So the ISBN number will be stated in the front page of the, of the proceeding. Next, the same paper, your paper, will be published in the referee journal. That is our, uh, your entitlement when you pay the fee for this conference. Publication in proceeding and also publication in referee journal. The name of the journals are listed in the conference website. Yeah, there are seven journals, uh, seven journals. And your paper, depending on the research area of your paper or research discipline of your paper will be published in either one of those. Uh, seven. Okay, if your paper is uh, related to education, for instance, it will be published in International Journal of Education and Pedagogy. If your paper is engineering in nature, then it will be published in International Journal of Engineering at One Research. Uh, one, uh, there's another one, General uh, Engineering also. Uh, I forgot the name now. <laughs> okay, but either one, it will be published there. Okay. If it is a social sign, it will be published in our social sign journal. So, <clears throat> the this is a snapshot of our uh, 
uh, conference certificate. You will receive something like this, similar to the uh, to the one shown there, the certificate with the name and then the your 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 you as a presenter actually, and then the title of your paper. And below down there is the name of the conference, the date, and also uh, our <coughs> company stamp as well. All right. And those who submitted their um, video, the video will be published in our YouTube channel. So it's, it, it will look something like this. Uh, in this case, there is one paper by Amira in our previous conference. Title is this one. Okay, uh, in YouTube, you cannot have the, the title name more than 100 uh, characters. So for this, like this one, if they have a title more than 100, maybe I will have to summarize the title, you know, it's not exactly going to be the same like this. But <clears throat> your abstract will be there under the uh, brief description of the, of the, of the video. And then we will provide the URL to you so that you can access and check the video. And then um, <clears throat> um, there, there was an instance from our previous participant when she received the URL, she checked and then she actually posted her comment down below and asked actually her colleagues, friend, whoever knows her uh, to uh, give the feedback, comment and so on. That, that's very good actually. And actually, yes, she received many comments, many compliments, feedback, you know, regarding the, uh, the presentation and also regarding the, the content of the paper as well, which is good. So you can do the same, okay? In this case, maybe you don't have the video. <laughs> so whatever comment coming from this uh, will be coming from this uh, conference, all right? The next one is a summary, okay? Just, uh, just to remind back ourselves. Conference proceeding with ISBN number should be within one month, but normally we can do less than two weeks, provided that we receive all the full paper timely. Second, publication in refereed journal. I mentioned to you there are seven refereed journal that we have in our disposal, and that should be done within one to three months. Just to add on that, our journal published four times a year. Yeah, March, June, September and December. So for this conference, which is uh, today, the deadline, so we are targeting for publication by December, December issue of those journals. Okay. So your paper will be published in December issue of those journals, any of those journals. Okay. Do you notice that we are publishing the same paper, the one that we published also in proceeding? Is that okay? You have any issue? Actually, there is no problem at all. Normally, uh, our concern mainly is, will there be, you know, similarity index issue, plagiarism issue, because we are having two set of papers, same title, you know, same content, same authors and everything, one in proceeding book, one in the, in the journal. Uh, it is okay because you know why? The proceeding is in PDF. It is offline, it is not online, okay? And the traffic journal is online. So there will not be any issue at all with respect to similarity. Okay. And then even before we publish in the referee journal, we'll, we will give opportunity for authors, participants, to, if they wish to, to revise the, uh, the paper. Okay. Some of them, they add additional authors. Some of them change a bit the title. Some of them, uh, revise the uh, the abstract, you know, add more in the literature review and so on. Okay, some of them also fine, uh, no change on the paper, so we publish straight away in the in the journal. Okay, the next one is selected paper. Selected paper eh, will be offered for publication in high index journal. Here we we offer only publication in Scopus, and only limited journal that we have. And this within three to six months, normally, under normal circumstances, okay? Some papers is, you know, published earlier than three months, some papers 
publish more than six months. But in general, within three to six months. Okay. So, like I said just now, all accepted paper will be published in proceeding. You may, we may be uh, informing you via email if there is a need to uh, make correction to the papers. There are some, some papers that need to be corrected. Some, some of the participants actually submitted their paper in PDF. Okay, so we cannot process uh, PDF uh, for our proceeding publication and also general publication because we have to change the format, you know, we have to put in the right uh, page numbering and so on. So if you give us PDF, we cannot do that. So you have to submit to us the Microsoft Word version of your, of your full paper. Okay. <clears throat> and then I just mentioned why the PDF, why the uh, proceeding is not online. Uh, because I explained to you because we want to publish the same paper in the, in the journal, which is online. So we want to avoid we want to avoid similarity issue. Yeah. And the next one is publication in this referee journal. Journal are online, indexed by Malaysian Citation Center uh, with the ISSN number provided as well. Okay. Like I said just now, you have the opportunity to revise your paper before we publish in the in the journal. We will inform you. Okay. Normally we will uh, <clears throat> we will uh, convert your paper into our general formatted uh, paper and then we'll uh, email back the, the, the formatted paper according to our general standard to you. And then if you want to make some changes or revise or add or delete, you can do that in that version of the paper, okay? If you don't want to make any more changes, that is also fine, okay? <clears throat> uh, these are the list of the seven journals that we have uh, that is available also in the in the conference website. All right. So, <clears throat> journal of education there is one business and economy, accounting and finance, social science journal. There are two actually, uh, IJSSR and JOSSAR, and then the <clears throat> uh, engineering journal IJER and technology and uh, information system. IGTMIS, right? So your paper will be published in any one of these, depending on the discipline of your study. Can I <laughs> uh, ask a question, Dr. Safi? Yes, uh, Sorry, apologize me. All right, so regarding about uh, all the journalists that you have already shown the previous uh, slide. Uh, so it means that uh, our paper uh, will be appointed uh, to be in one of the journal. So let's say if the paper is about social sciences, so it means that uh, the committee will appoint us to submit or you will, I mean, that automatically submit to uh, whatever journal in here. All, all the procedures, uh, process of submission will be done uh, by our part. You don't have to do anything. All right. All right, we so it means that you will, uh, yeah, you will select our paper in two, I mean, in published in, uh, in uh, whatever yeah. journal in here. So, all right, okay, thank you so much. Normally, we will, uh, <clears throat> remember just now, we will uh, reformat your paper according to the general standard. Yes. And then we we'll yes. send email to the author, to the participant, that revised paper, together with our, uh, the name of the journal. However, there are also situations where the author or the participant does not want to, to publish a paper in that particular journal that we, that we propose. Okay? He or she want to, be pub, to, to, want to have the paper to be published in other journal, which is fine also with us. Because some paper actually uh, cross between two. Okay? Some, uh, there is one paper that is talking about... <clears throat> uh, about Disability learning technology. Okay. A technology, a new technology to help people with disabl disability. So that paper actually, from, from our from our perspective or from our reviewers' perspective, can be published in technology IGTMLS, yeah, in technology journal. It can also go to uh, 
uh, education and pedagogy journal also you know so it, it depends there are situation like that also all right can i move on okay we are talking about the scopus uh, our reviewers will also <clears throat> select normally for every conference that we organize we receive many submissions of papers from participants and uh, our panel reviewers will normally select few that uh, they think will uh, that they think the, those papers have the merits for scopus publication scopus only we don't we don't publish in uh, wos or, or for now yeah we do not have any 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 working contact with the editors other than scopus okay so if we found that uh, any one of the paper is you know have the merits and novelty for scopus uh, we will inform the author we will inform the uh, participant so if the participant agree then uh, we proceed with the with the publication process in scopus <clears throat> and then if we place your paper for scopus the same paper cannot be published in our reference journal for the same reason i mentioned earlier to avoid any similarity issue similarity yes exactly uh, just just a quick question again uh, dr safi if you yes. don't mind again uh, all right so yeah so of course uh, in order to avoid the similarity so we, we need to choose or whatever okay this is a part of the committee works right yeah uh, but the problem in here is uh, if you uh, see about the timeline okay if you want to go to the scopus yeah the committee need uh, three to six months and then for the uh, referred journal is uh, one to two months right if i'm not correct one to three months one to three months all right yeah. so the things in here is um uh, I think I, I'm not so sure how how it's gonna work because uh, I believe you know uh, you know everything come in the same time you know because if 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 it's not for the refer journal so then I think you need to inform us that okay this paper will be selected to the Scopus publication okay or if you already mentioned to us that okay your paper will be published in our refer journal so it is automatically uh, not going to be published in Scopus am I correct with that? Yes, correct. Because that, one, that because right. one, when you publish, okay, then you cannot take it out again. No, 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 you cannot take it out. Once it's published, yes. there, you cannot take it out. Yeah. So, so just <clears throat> means that all right. So, it, so once you say that okay, your paper will be published in refer journal, so that is done. So it means that no longer for the scopus. Am I correct? Yes. Unless before it goes to the refer journal, the, and uh, in advance you let us or you let all the participants your paper uh, is selected to be the scopus. So. We know already it's not going to be in the refer journal, so then we have to wait for another three to six months for the scopus journal. Am I correct? Like that? Yes. Yes. But, but all right. Basically, okay, it, is, it is. It is. It is. Uh, what you 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 thought recently, yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Thank you. So for 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 high index journal publication, within two to four weeks from today, we will we will select those those paper and then we will inform the authors, the uh, the, the the corresponding author. Okay. And when, once we inform, uh, we ask the author if they agree or not. Some author don't agree to publish, you know, in Scopus because of mostly because of the cost, you know. Yeah, fee. Other than that, uh, they don't. Uh, they don't. Uh, they they normally agree, okay. And then, once they agree, only then actually we will uh, give them the uh, uh, the template, full paper template of that particular journal, the Scopus journal, so that we can uh, change the content of the paper into the, the requested template of that particular Scopus journal. Okay. And then we will not, we will actually uh, give a indicator into our system that we will not publish this paper in our referee journal. Okay. All right. <clears throat> right now, right now, we have these two Scopus journal. Okay. Uh, that we can help actually uh, author to publish in. One is Journal of Management Information and Decision Science, uh, short JMIDS, it's a Q2 journal. The other one is Journal of Legal, Ethical and Regulatory Issue, JLERI, also Q2 journal. 
So uh, <clears throat> depending on what the outcome of our reverse, some some paper that we found in in this particular conference may be suitable for scopus, but are not suitable to be published in these two journals. You know, so <laughs> we can we cannot recommend, we cannot propose that. Maybe that paper is uh, social science in nature. Maybe that paper is uh, education, pedagogy in nature. So we cannot publish in these two. Okay. So <clears throat> normally we will inform the authors or the participant within two to four weeks. Within two to four weeks, if you guys do not receive any information about Scopus publication, you can consider that your paper is not selected. Not because your paper is not good enough, some of you, but we do not have the appropriate journal to publish to. Okay. We can't publish your paper in all the journal, uh, Scopus journal listed in Scopus database because uh, our relationship, we also maintain a certain degree of relationship with the editors, with the editors of specific journal. That makes our life easier. That's why, that's, that's how we, we have the, we, we place our value to have uh, authors actually to publish in Scopus journal. So we have uh, our partner in these two uh, journals editor's partner. So we have a very good chance of the paper getting published uh, faster than normal actually. All right. But depending on the research area of the paper, if it's not suitable, then we can we can help you there. Okay. Right. So uh, again, it's a summary. One month, three months, six months. One three six. The rule of one three six. I, I I always say that is rule of one three six. Okay, and most importantly, all communications via email. Email is very important because we keep our communication using email a lot. Okay, uh, if you don't have email, some 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 participant give a wrong email. You know, wrong wrongly type. You know, so we have really difficulty if we don't have email because we cannot send you notification, acceptance notification. Uh, information uh, dis uh, disposition and so on. So we need an email, uh, a valid email address. <clears throat> so our upcoming conferences. Today we have this PICM in Penang right now. Uh, next month we will have on the 11th of December another conference in Putrajaya. And toward the end of the year, after Christmas, okay, you celebrate the Christmas and then <laughs> I don't know whether you guys can can travel to, to, to Malaysia to, to international waters or not now from Indonesia. I'm not sure. But uh, we, uh, Malaysian, can already do that, you know, to travel overseas. But that depends on the restriction of the respective other countries, whether they, they have certain, you know, number of days that you have to quarantine yourself, you know, you have to receive two doses or you have to receive three doses and so on. So that depends on the on the regulation of the respective countries. And then in January, also we have in the middle of January and also to the end of the January. In the middle of January, we have in Putraja also, and then Langkawi. Uh, end of January. So <clears throat> in February also, in KL and Penang. And uh, in March. We also have another two conferences in KL and Langkawi. So these are the list of the conferences that we have already published in our system. Um, <clears throat> I'm not sure whether you will receive a notification of this conference because the system select randomly. Okay, in our database, the once we blast the email, um, may maybe maybe you will be you probably will be receiving or you will. Probably not, you know, because it's a random system. But anyway, if you if you are interested to know or you want to, or you have desire to uh, participate in our future conferences, you can always you can always email this particular email address that currently you have PICM. Yes, use PICM at acinetworks.org. Uh, somebody will address your your inquiry. Okay. So that's about all. Sorry, taking more than eight minutes. 
if you have any question generally about the conference please uh, please ask me now otherwise maybe we can do that during the q and a towards the end of the session all right so let me go back to our presentation session now are we ready now yes good let me uh all right dr ahmad are you ready okay okay dr ahmad you may take the floor now please welcome dr ahmad from university kebangsaan malaysia uh, dr ahmad has two papers to to present at this time in silico approach on e6 and e7 i'm afraid this is too engineering to me but some of you may bisa nyambung ya <laughs> and mutation on uh, some term there Dr. Ahmad can explain that better later in the presentation. Please welcome Dr. Ahmad Tarmidi. Thank you. Uh, thank you very, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, Dr. Sapi, uh, and also organizing committee for allowing or accepting uh, four papers to be presented uh, this afternoon. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and uh, very good morning. Let me share my screen. Is it okay, Dr. Sapi? So I'll share my screen then. Yes, yes, definitely. Okay. I need to stop sharing my my slide. Yeah, yeah, of course. Okay. Just to check whether whether uh, everyone of you managed to see my screen here. I yeah, can now. I can see it. All right. Thank you. Okay. The title of uh, my topics is about uh, in silico approach on E6 and E7 oncoprotein of HIV16 rules in rule uh, in oral cancer progression. So sometimes uh, my mic uh, doesn't work. So let me know if uh, you are able to listen to my voice. Yes, of course. So is it, is it okay, Dr. Shafi? Is it okay, the sound? Yeah, the sound better for me. Uh, I'm not sure oh. about our our friends from Indonesia. How about, uh, <laughs> how about other places? Yeah, is yeah, it okay? Yeah, can, yeah. Right. can see, yes. can hear. Yes, we can. All right, yeah. yes, great. So just for a start, uh, about uh, myself, pretty quick, because I'm not a dentist, so even though uh, the the I mean, application there stated that I'm from Faculty of Dentistry, University of Bangsa, Malaysia, but I'm a, uh, by profession, is a biochemist, yeah? So I'm okay. a biochemist. All right. So the title that uh, I'm planning to share with you, the, the title I said earlier about the in silico approach. So this is the very first uh, presentation. So this is uh, outline of the this afternoon presentation. Okay. For those who are not familiar with uh, the name of the virus, so of this uh, for this study, so this human papilloma viruses, so this is uh, the kind of virus uh, that the genome is a DNA. So the genome means that the genetic material that this uh, virus possesses is a DNA. Uh, DNA stands for deoxy uh, deoxyribonucleic uh, nucleic acid. Eh? So this is the genome of this virus. In terms of the shape, this is a small, of course, this is a tiny. Uh, Kind of virus could be seen or observed using uh, using not uh, using the uh, normal microscope, but is using the the uh, even uh, a high level of uh, microscope quality. Then you could see, I mean, seen this uh, kind of virus. So this small, non envelope So the shape is icosahedral virus. And in terms of the genome size, about uh, at a thousand, a thousand base pair. So this base pair. For those who are not familiar, so this is uh, the length of uh, the genetic material belong to this uh, virus, HPV in short. Okay. okay. And then uh, this uh, clearly referring to these uh, papers by Fiona and et al. Eh? Okay. And then being divided, uh, this HPV being divided into, uh, in terms of their risk as a pathogen to a human, so being divided into two major groups, being called as high risk group and as a low risk group. So they got less number of uh, candidates uh, belong to this high risk group, but the selected one for this study. So it should be tax 16 and also 18. Whereas for the low risk group, uh, that lines uh, infectious to human, even though they may I mean, could be found in a human. So this has to be tax 6 and also uh, 11. So throughout this study, I'm focusing for uh, the HV16, I mean, uh, and also the rest. 
So referring to the article, uh, stated that I mean by, by referring to Hadad 2008, uh, 2008, yeah, papers. So in 2012 also by uh, referring to IACR records. So this is being declared. So this kind of virus being declared as, as uh, to show this uh, HV16 types related to the oral cancer and uh, referring to the papers by Hadad 2008. So the oncoproteins, so the kind of protein that present in this virus, the types, I mean, uh, type 16 that is related here, being, being reported here. So the oncoprotein E6 and also E7. So this is to uh, let us to study more on this kind of virus, but by using a different approach for this kind of uh, papers that have been published, I mean, being, being presented today. So in terms of the biological role, how important is knowing this E6? Oncoprotein. So this is responsible to degrade the kind of genes being called as P53 tumor suppressor uh, protein that uh, where this uh, E6, uh, E6 oncoprotein responsible to that. So this uh, the result of that. So this prevent the P50 uh, mediated apoptosis of infected cell means to the host where this actually infected. Another one, so this is E7 oncoprotein, so responsible to induce degradation tumor suppressor retinoblastoma uh, genes. So this is encode for the protein there being called as PRB. So this stands for the, I mean, for the retinoblastoma. And the result of that, so this involved in the nuclear localization and nuclear export signal. So this is uh, the two uh, focus, I mean, the two uh, oncoprotein that being focused for this uh, I mean, for the presentation today. Next, so the aim of this study in general to study the relationship uh, between the uh, biological effect of this mutation that present or observed in the sequence, the amino acid sequence on the, the two oncoprotein here, E6 and also E7, uh, and then to look how this in association with the progression of oral cancer. And then to narrow down the scope of the aim, I mean, to objective, to determine the effect of mutation. So we, I mean, uh, study the mutation that present in those two uh, uh, protein, the oncoprotein there, so how this relate to the effect, uh, affecting to the radical function of those two uh, the protein there. Next, to design the oncoprotein structure based on if we uh, may find the mutation happen or occur at the uh, I mean, it's a sequence level on those two uh, oncoproteins. So we we'll, we we'll design the 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 structure. Is there any difference in terms of the shape or the conformation, the structure of the oncoprotein as a result of uh, the mutation that present there? And the third one to help other field of research, uh, like uh, epidemiological study. So knowing that this is we related to the. Uh, to the oral cancer or the progression of oral cancer. So we want to, to suggest or to, to give an idea how this, uh, the output of this research could be, uh, sub, could be uh, supported in that area in, in drug design. Now, uh, the kind of uh, technique or uh, process uh, methodology, so uh, we're being uh, summarized in this way. So the strategy of the research by, I mean, by looking at uh, the literature, literature or later literature uh, uh, later view or review, and then uh, combining with the bioinformatic approach. Okay. So how we do that? I mean, by uh, searching numbers of uh, articles that related to this area, and then link together with our effort here by the approach of bioinformatics. So I'll tell about this approach, uh, I mean, bioinformatic approach, uh, for the subsequent slide next. So this is a summary of uh, the strategy to, I mean, by using this biometric approach, so being called as in silico approach, okay, in silico approach, where we search to the database. So this is integrated database, we call it the NCBI. So this acronym for uh, National Center for Biotechnology Information. So this acronym of this NCBI and the address listed there. And this is what we, I mean, uh, being, being searched, the, the, the information from this uh, database there. So this is looking at the uh, protein sequences and then, and then the, we model that. So this is, I mean, by referring to another website being called is Swiss model. So this is uh, basically this uh, platform where we could uh, design 
by referring to the sequence or the protein sequence that you have or obtain from the SCBI and then design the, the structure of, I mean, 3D structure of uh, the protein that we have and comparing the wild type or the normal sequence of uh, E6 and also E7 and uh, compared with the one that we mutated, uh, the, muted, the, the mutated uh, E6 and also mutated E7 and then we compare both, okay? And the third uh, step, so using, I mean, viewing uh, those, those structures that have been designed from this uh, uh, Swiss model here, by uh, two apps here. So this is basically the free app. Eh? So there is uh, no need to have uh, so this subscription and so forth. So this is a free for uh, any scientist that uh, using these uh, apps. So the name of this app, we call it uh, Swiss, I mean, Deep Viewer. And the second one is uh, Rasmo. So this is a very, uh, call it a useful uh, uh, application or software that being uh, utilized for this uh, particular reason in silico approach. Eh? Next. Now, this is the interface, uh, interface of the NCBI database. So this is a protein integrated uh, protein databases where we have uh, been just a, a screenshot uh, or select sort of this uh, interface. Okay, this is a nucleotide database. So we can, uh, I mean, uh, drop down uh, option here. So this is a selected uh, database that you can utilize here. So look to search for numbers of sequences uh, belong to HPV type 16. And also this is the name of the protein that we are looking at. So this, uh, the, 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 the searching using uh, what's called it, Boolean uh, type of searching. So we have to add in N, N, N. So this is uh, N or O. So this is uh, how we narrow down the scope of searching those, uh, the, I mean, info from the database there. And this, uh, the selected uh, sequence, for, I mean, for, for, for example, right? so comparing between the normal sequence, so this is a wild type sequence of uh, uh, protein that we are, uh, we are getting from the database search. Eh? And this is a mutated one. The one that being given the color, so this is uh, uh, just to, for, for the purpose of differentiation. So they being given a number okay, from uh, uh, sequence number one. So this, this uh, we call it the single letter representation of amino acid uh, sequence. Eh? So they being called M, stand for methionine. Eh? And the last uh, residue or amino acid residue here, L, stand for leucine. And the one that being given the color, so this, uh, uh, this stand for the aspartic acid. Eh? So D stand for aspartic acid. And this R for arginine. Eh? So these two tell us that uh, the position. Here we uh, say that uh, the position of number, uh, this of 41, 41, 42, 43. So this, uh, the residue number 43 being replaced uh, by the different amylicid residue. Eh? So from uh, aspartic acid to uh, arginine. Eh? So this is uh, kind of how we could uh, identify uh, the, the location or the position of the, uh, the mutation compare between the normal sequence versus the uh, mutated one. Eh? So this is uh, how we look into it. Okay, and then this uh, the Swiss model. So it's, this is another apps or uh, interface where we uh, utilize this uh, Swiss model uh, website where the the model been designed or 3D model been designed from the sequence that we, we obtain. So therefore, we are capable to design the so this is more or less about the compositional uh, biology study yeah? so designing the model by uh, by using the available uh, sequence that we have from scbi and then compare between the, the wild type or the normal sequence versus uh, the mutated one and then getting the i mean the, the output from this uh, it, uh, swiss model uh, approach so we'll get the 3d structure okay of the protein that we are looking at so this interface using Deep Viewer, eh? so how we could uh, see or observe the, the position of the sequence. So this is the, the way that being represented, uh, the default setting here by this wireframe for those in, in this line or this uh, discipline. So you should be familiar with the wireframe presentation like this. Eh? So this is another way how this is being presented. So this, uh, uh, this the the 3D model of the uh, the protein structure. So this is being present, uh, being viewed using another software. We call it uh, Rasmol. Right? So this freeware. Now the result to make it uh, quick uh, for the second presentation next. So the result from this uh, uh, study, so we managed to identify the position of uh, I mean, residue that being uh, mutated by comparing the normal versus the mutated one. So the one that being, uh, summar being summarized here by referring to this table and the top 
is the the model that we managed to get the structure. Then this being reported by the this paper. Eh? Okay, so the one that being presented here by referring to this table uh, on the left. So this just to show about the position where this mutation happened at uh, amnesia residue number ten and the amnesia uh, residue number one hundred and thirty one. Okay, so this replacement of uh, the arginine from alanine. So this uh, the mutation happened at two places. So number ten and position at number one three one. So same thing goes uh, from this paper, okay, by uh, Diu and at all, at all 2012. So this are located at uh, one, I mean three, three eight. and this involved in the uh, uh, the, re the replacement of leucine to valine. Eh? The one that being reported by respect uh, that published in 2016 about the effect of mutation that occur here, okay, the mutation that occur here yeah, is at the two places. So this result in the increased formation of trimeric complex with uh, P53, whereas the paper that reported in 2012 by you at all. So this uh, uh, mentioned that the result to, to this mutation happened at one place at 38. So they reduced the steady level of P53. Okay? So this is about the one that being reported on uh, E6 uh, protein, OCO protein. Right? So we look at another example. So this is a view of uh, the interface that using Rasmo eh, to to show about the different uh, inter inter I mean uh, different uh, way how this is being presented. So this we call it uh, the the uh, what's called the way they being presented as uh, a ball I mean uh, uh, what's called ball and uh, uh, space filling. Eh? So this is a kind of space filling representation. So different way how the previous uh, call it uh, shows about the wireframe presentation. So this is uh, to show about the, the position at arginine uh, plate, uh, number 10 to arginine uh, uh, number 131. So this is normal, uh, normal sequence or normal position where uh, E6 uh, wants to be being compared. And then, and then this uh, another one. The same, the same place, uh, number 10 and also number 131. So this uh, replacement of the residue or the amnesia residue that being mutated on the E6 oncoprotein. Yeah? Right now, we move on to the another oncoprotein, so E7. So, this uh, to indicate about the I mean, uh, the, the replacement at, at two position 50, 55 and also 64. So, the, 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 the different in terms of the residue that being replaced here. So, this is uh, a substitution of uh, valine to uh, uh, call it uh, tyrosine. So this is a replacement, I mean, sorry, trionin. So trionin, uh, I mean, re being re I mean, to replace this valin. And this uh, trionin replaced by uh, aspartic acid. Okay? So this is at position number 64. And the result that reported by uh, uh, Todorovic uh, in 2011. So this uh, uh, being reported that this increased the stability of E7 and increased the degradation of uh, retinoblastoma protein there. And uh, another paper by the same the same group, but uh, the, the year later, okay, 2012. So this uh, indicated that the position, uh, 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 more position there. So this instead of the one that we imported earlier, 55, 64, and this also got additional one. So they got 66 and also 92. Okay, the replacement that, that they reported like this. Okay, and then uh, we managed to get uh, the the <clears throat> the different there. So this is being presented by by I mean by referring by using this uh, deep viewer. So this being counted, how they differ? Differ in terms of uh, the, I mean, the shape of the 3D, uh, uh, 3D uh, structure of this protein being 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 different. So this is the value there. So if the value is uh, 0.00, so means that no different. So they, uh, even though they got mutation, but still remain the same. The, the shape or the structure remain the same. So this being given a number, but since it's not zero, so this is 0 0.03. So this is uh, it, uh, the slight change in terms of the structure or three structure of this protein as a result of mutation. And uh, the outcome that being reported by Toro Rick, uh, 2012 here, so this increased transformation uh, potential for this event that occurs in the E7 oncoprotein. And this is the same. So we look at uh, the normal uh, it, uh, residue that, that being uh, call it, uh, affected. Okay, this is a normal one. So at position number 64 and also the valine 55. And then following to that, the mutated one at the same place, but they've been replaced by uh, asparagine, as it's thrown in there. Okay. Now, 
Uh, move on to the uh, the second last part of this. Uh, I mean, on the discussion part here. Yeah. So HB16, uh, uh, there's oncoprotein uh, E6 and E6 7 So this emerged as central oncoprotein. So this uh, being associated with the uh, cancer formation that being reported from the from the article that been published that we searched through uh, literature review. Okay, and then this uh, uh, the capability of those mutations that happen. There's the ability to bind and inactive uh, the the tumor suppressor gene. This tumor suppressor gene is a is a uh, is a normal normal gene responsible to uh, encode for respective protein. They've been called as P53 and also PRB. So that's responsible to uh, stop or the the I mean the the direction or destiny for the cells. For the apoptosis, apoptosis. So since I uh, got the mutation there, so this may result to this uh, action. I mean, to bind or activate the tumor suppressor gene there. Next, so this oncoprotein may also, I mean, may not show significant alteration to the process structure by referring to the value RMST that observed. I mean, uh, summarized on the table there. So even though it's not so 0 0.0, I mean, 0 0.0 as strong, the unit uh, that being uh, presented by uh, 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 the viewer, so this, uh, but still, uh, they being reported that uh, there's a slight change in, in terms of the, the shape there. So, E6, uh, for example, E6 oncoprotein with the value 0 0.01, eh, so as strong, so this slightly uh, change in terms of the, the, the RMC value there, but it's uh, uh, showed this increase in the P53 degradation. So, how the effect uh, of the bulk function of Fifty-three, a function as a tumor suppressor of uh, protein. Then, okay. And the paper, uh, uh reported in, uh, in two thousand six by Bruce and all at all. So this changes the protein structure and only stick to the correlation in the molecular function. So it's how we try to uh, relate the work that been published uh, with our composition, compositional biology uh, result right, from I mean using uh, the model that we have. So for these two oncoprotein, E6 and also E7, it's the ideal target for the generation of vaccine, how we could utilize the model that have been designed here to uh, support in the uh, vaccine design okay, against, uh, I mean, against uh, these uh, uh, factors, I mean, these specific factors uh, to, to, to the host. Yeah? So this paper published by uh, Gitton and, uh, Gitoni, so Gitoni et al, 2015. Okay. Another one uh, by uh, Naldini, so Naldini papers. So this uh, mentioned that uh, mutated oncoprotein uh, may also play a role in gene therapy. So this is another biological importance knowing this. Okay. But we have to uh, admit they got a still a limitation using the freeware. So we, I mean, uh, using the deep view Rosmo and also this model to design because we cannot uh, com I mean, cover the whole length of the sequences that we have to get a model. So it's the one that very limited uh, the, uh, sequence, I mean, from the total of uh, with this E6 and also E7 uh, sequences that we have to be modeled in whole. So the one that we are lucky because we managed to get uh, the part that being uh, it, uh, mutated there. So we have a model there for, purpose, for the purpose of comparison in terms of the 3D such uh, of those. So these are uh, the one that we have uh, in terms of the Swiss model uh, in uh, helping us in uh, designing the structure on 3D model there. And then the mutated uh, protein sequence selection must be consists of more location of mutation. So to uh, tell us uh, more about I mean, the information that being reported from the pub publication that we have. So increased number of templates. So therefore uh, we have to have uh, to select the numbers of uh, tablet to, to get the, the full length of the sequences that you have to be modeled. So since we are using the freeware, so they got a limitation by uh, on this uh, at, I mean, on this part. Okay. So what the policy feature for check for prospect from this uh, study? So we are proposed I mean, to propose to test the effect of mutated E6 and also E7 on cooperative so the host in the level three. And then for the research using the mutated one, so it's not, I mean, to allow us, I mean, to tell us about the detail, uh, the, fu the value function of this E6 and also E7. Okay, so with that, uh, moving on to the last part of the, my presentation here about the conclusion. So mutation present, uh, the observed in E6 and also E7 on coproteins, so this altered the protein structure, even though they got a slight uh, 
a change in term by referring to the RMS value there. So in term of the uh, it, uh, alteration match okay, by this uh, mutation happened there. So to the protein structure and also binding capacity of the respective uh, uh, it, protein there, P60, P53 and also uh, PRB yeah, respectively. Okay, so these are the references, uh, are the selected ones. There are a lot more references uh, available, but uh, these are the selected uh, it, uh, that uh, this major contribution for this uh, paper, I mean, for this uh, publication or for this uh, research done, yeah. Okay, with that, uh, I'll end uh, my first part of my presentation. Okay, and then we move on to the second one. Can I continue, uh, Dr. Shafi? Uh, any questions from the from the uh, from the audience? So uh, I noticed that a uh, very colorful background uh, of the audience. So I'm not sure. <laughs> with, uh, <laughs> <clears throat> but uh, I just I just I just have a very 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 simple probably man to man man on the street kind of questions. Thank you. Uh, uh, yeah. in, in one of the in one of the set you mentioned about the, about the Watts formation. What's that? The formation? Yeah, what's formation? Oh, okay, okay. So the kind of uh, uh, disease that caused by HV, right? Yeah, yeah. And wh wh where is this? In which which part of the of the human body that this what form form actually? Ba ba basically, at the private part of a human body. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> to, be okay. most, uh, to be most specific, because uh, this is a genital genital uh, uh, part that being targeted by this HIV, basically. So therefore, this being uh, recommended for uh, someone, I mean, uh, by our government, our Malaysian government. So for those who age uh, 12 to 13, I mean, for for girl, eh? so yeah. they need to have a kind of vaccine uh, to be, I mean, to to be to be like the one that we have for for uh, uh, current, I mean, the current the current uh, disease that we have uh, now for COVID nineteen. So same thing we have for HIV. So we have, I mean, those. Uh, Girl, age uh, twelve to thirteen, so you have a, you have a jab, so jab for that uh, against uh, this HIV infection. Eh? So, but 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 uh, to be more focused about the one uh, that being being called as the high risk one, so HIV sixteen, uh, eighteen. So they got numbers of credit. Uh, the one that mentioned uh, for my, my presentation is like that too. Eh? It's sixteen and also eighteen. They are thirty five, thirty three. Uh, so these among I mean types that uh, being called as the high risk category. So these are very it, uh, I mean, for those uh, without uh, this uh, jab received, I mean, for girl, eh? so they may prone to, uh, I mean, op I mean, re receive this kind of infection. Is that or one? The, is, is that the one called a rubella vaccine? Uh, no, this is not the rubella one. So this is meant for the HIV. So this is uh, being called the bivalent, okay. uh, bivalent, and then the quadrivalent. There's a very, th I mean, numbers of uh, vaccine types. So, but this uh, the the kind of receive against uh, those uh, HIV types. Eh? Mm, okay, all right. Uh, okay, any other question from the audience? Can I ask a question? Yes, yes, please. Uh, since you say that HPV also 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 responsible for the cancer in other part, yeah, other than other than oral, is it uh, is the is the is the effect that you found also apply to to uh, cervical cancer maybe? Yes, of course. There's a vital cancer, there's a lung, okay. Uh, lung cancer also uh, being, being reported, but number, uh, they differ in terms of the HIV type that uh, response, I mean, uh, being, being found that uh, targeting to that, that particular area. Okay, that is the first question. And the second question is, is there any uh, clinical impact? Uh, maybe uh, makes the uh, more severe disease, maybe? Uh, yes. But uh, this being reported uh, for the oral oral cancer is uh, being considered as how many, I mean the in terms of the severity. Eh? So this is being being classified as numbers number six. Eh? So the six uh, in terms of the severity of this oral cancer due to the infection made by HPV. But we are we are we are more focusing. I'm focusing on the the high risk one instead of the the low the low risk one the type 6 and also type 11. But this is consider the mild effect of this, uh, the low risk one, eh? by uh, 6 and also the 11 types. 
Thank you, Dr. Abad. Uh, you're welcome, Moss. Okay, guys. Can we proceed to the next one? Dr. Ahmad? Uh, yeah, all right. So the next one, yeah? Hold on. So I need to uh, unshare the screen uh, first, uh, Dr. Shafi, before uh, the second one uh, topics. Yeah, I think so. Okay, let me try this. But I think you can go straight to your next presentation. You don't, okay, okay. You, you don't right. have to unshare actually. Okay, okay. Hmm. All right, so this is another topic. Uh, the thing that uh, I may share with you about the similar approach means that using the compositional biology approach so to the study, the only difference is that uh, using a different uh, uh, subject. So what I mean by subject, the gene that we are focusing here, so P, uh, PX9. So PX9 is gene uh, that has responsible effect to the tooth A genesis. So this is more towards uh, then dental uh, dental area, so it means uh, looking at the tools uh, formation here. So this affecting, I mean, the mutation that happened at this uh, PAX9 gene that affecting the formation of tooth, okay, tooth A genesis. So don't ask too much about the dentistry part because I'm not dental, I'm a biochemist, but my focus here or uh, interest more towards uh, using the in silico approach. Okay? All right, as an introduction. So this is uh, the one that mentioned, or the approach here, so in silico. In silico means uh, the kind of study, computational biology study, is using the computer and also the database, so the data mining, and then, uh, to analyze those results uh, by using uh, related software. So this is uh, what, what's called as a dry lab activity, not the wet lab. Wet lab means that we are, we are, we are doing uh, the, the activity inside the physical lab. So this is in front of the computers, it means using the, using the apps, that, I mean, application that related to that. So this is being, being called as a dry lab activity, mm. right, in silico. Now, uh, how we look at uh, the summary of, uh, or the influence of these uh, genes. So these uh, PAX9 genes, so this is responsible as one of the factors that are responsible uh, controlling the event of tooth formation eh, or tooth development. So from the initiation stage, the bud stage, and also the cap, cap stage. But the most important thing, how the influence of this uh, PAX-19. And uh, my next presentation also focusing on this another gene, which, which is uh, the MAX-1 uh, this afternoon. I mean, I mean the, fact, uh, the, the second part of my presentation. Eh? But for the first part of my session here, uh, talking about the involvement of these genes, PX, PX9. So this is how they affect towards the, the budding stage. So during the mesenchymal signal here. So this is how the role played by these uh, PX9 genes. So we look at, at the very beginning. Yeah? So how the effect of these uh, PGF8 genes. So this activate uh, the function of this uh, uh, expression of PX9 uh, genes where the release or the, the, the translation of uh, PAX9 protein. Eh? And the effect to that, so this, uh, once so the expression of this PAX9, so this maintain the mesenchymal or uh, the uh, BMP4 expression. And later, so this, uh, this BMP1 is being, ex uh, being expressed, so this signal back to the epithelium. So this being summarized from this diagram or illustration here. And the result of that, so if, the mutation happened. So if the mutation happened at this level, so we look at the effect of that. So to the, the dental formation, I mean the tooth formation or tooth development. So they got the various uh, types of, I mean various types of abnormalities for the tooth formation. So being called as hyperdontia, oligodontia, and also uh, anodontia. So this is a kind of abnormal shape of the tooth once uh, uh, mutation happened. Uh, the one that mentioned here about the point mutation, but the one that being uh, focused on this study, looking at where exactly the, the position of the mutation happened at this gene, or at this uh, PAX9 gene, that may result to the respective uh, abnormal in terms of tooth that being formed. 
So compared to normal one, look at uh, this. And I'll explain further uh, my in this up this afternoon uh, from the my second slide observation about this kind of uh, condition. Now, so throughout this uh, objective okay, to to this study, so the main objective is to investigate, looking at uh, the mutation that present. So we are looking at the point mutation. Point mutation means the single mutation, uh, the single replacement of respective uh, base nucleotide that may result to the protein that being synthesized later. So this uh, our target, I mean our main objective throughout this study is that looking at uh, the point mutation that present or observed in the uh, Pax9 gene there. And later to utilize the computational ability to design the model. So it's a similar approach, meaning that looking, uh, I mean design the model of normal shape of uh, Pax9 protein versus the mutated uh, Pax9 protein from this. Okay? So the structure of changes and you look at uh, how they differ in terms of the RMS value. So this uh, acronym for the root mean square deviation for those who are not familiar with. So this uh, calculation made by the deep viewer and to tell us uh, if not zero and strong, meaning that uh, they slight change into of the 3D shape of that particular protein. So this to tell us uh, they slightly differ in terms of the, the, the 3D model that I mean uh, compact between the normal shape to the mutated one. And later we compare with the multiple impact that so similar approach, but the only thing that I mentioned here about the candidate for this uh, presentation. So you are looking at the PAX9 towards the tooth uh, process, I mean the tooth formation. Now, to be more specific, to identify the location where this point mutation uh, on the Pax9 gene, later to design or to model the 3D structure and then compare those with the uh, uh, mutated one. Okay. What we hypothesized at the very beginning of this study, so point mutation re reported on Pax9 gene causes possible structure alteration. So this is our null hypothesis. So we want to prove whether this is being proven from the, the study or being uh, compared to the one that being reported here. So the method, so similar to the one that mentioned from my previous slide, the only difference is that uh, I said uh, in terms of the genes that we are looking at. So this, uh, we are focusing on the Pax9 gene. And the rise of the workflow remains the same, summer, eh? Now the result, what we obtained from the, the study done on uh, Pax9 gene. So these, uh, we managed to get uh, two models. So two, two models there, so these being designed, but we report, I mean, we uh, call it uh, compared to the one that being reported from the effect of those uh, models that are being designed later. I mean, the effect of mutation. So these uh, referring to numbers of people there. Okay. So we search, of course, we search for the article, uh, I mean, to uh, link together the result that we have uh, later with uh, our uh, design, I mean, model that being designed okay? by using, I mean, by referring to the model number one as model number two from the paper that are published. So we managed to get the, the 3D, I mean, 3D model of the normal one okay? by referring to the, 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 the papers that we, we are referring to. And then um, we found that uh, about 19 mutation happened at, uh, which cover the the I mean, residue belong to past uh, nine genes, so from number I mean residue number one until residue number one three one. So it's not cover the whole length of the Pax nine genes. So it's about uh, three hundred and three. Eh? So the whole length of the Pax nine is a uh, three hundred and three. So and then managed to design the model of uh, <coughs> the, the 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 second model. Yeah. So it's cover of uh, 202 I mean 220 and also till uh, 2548 and we found uh, the area that being covered here to cover I mean the mutation or the single mutation at that position okay next uh, and then uh, again so just make it pretty quick so to allow our next presenter for the, the next topics okay so two mutated uh, 3D uh, structures that being obtained from the mutation A, I mean 1A and also 1B. So this is based on the one that being, I mean, obtained from the model uh, through uh, it, uh, Swiss model uh, it, uh, X. Okay. And the one that being shown here about the mutation 1A, and then you compare those uh, with uh, the position and this cover the area between four or receive number four to receive number one, three, two. 
Okay, I just go pretty quick about the modulated uh, version of uh, model two here, and then uh, so this is a summary. So the summary of the one that being reported, okay, numbers of position where this uh, mutation happened compared to the one uh, shown here based on the MSC residue. But he, uh, here this is MSC change. Eh? The one that being shown from the uh, the the first uh, the first <coughs> Uh, I mean, uh, on the right, I mean, on the left here. So, this is to show about the uh, base nucleotide. Eh? So, the replacement of the base nucleotide and the result to the mutated uh, sequence at position and various position. Okay? And this to link together the one that being published. Okay? So, from I mean, papers from 2005 and, uh, until 2015. So, these are various uh, papers that be reported at uh, various locations okay, being found here. All right. So the same things here from the model number, I mean, uh, model one, also number two, continuation about the one that from the previous uh, slide. Okay. So same thing here. So this continuation and this, uh, the one that we are focusing at, at various position. Okay. Ah, so this is the one that being, uh, it, uh, of, I mean, uh, viewed from, from the model. So from the compare between, I mean, uh, from the model to the wall chart versus the mutation happened at uh, various uh, location or various position. Okay, so it look uh, like similar, but in actual fact, the uh, slight change in terms of if you look, I mean, uh, uh, the uh, zooming of at that particular position. So the slight change in terms of the shape of the residue that are responsible or, or that being affected, uh, being, 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 being changed here. Yeah. Okay, so this is a close-up view of the model, okay, more from model model one uh, A, and the one that being shown here from the various position. Eh? So from the very position, and this being presented as a what's called it the space filling presentation. How is being being presented here? Okay, this is another one from model one B. So this uh, wireframe presentation just to indicate about the position where uh, comparison made. So this is called superimpose. Okay, superimpose of the two 3D structure together in in this space. So the one that being being presented in the blue color here, the normal one. Okay, so without any mutation. So the wall type for it, and the one that being shown or being presented here in red color. So this is a mutated one. But the one that we focus, I'll be focusing in the uh, what uh, circle here to indicate about the position where this mutation happened or the mutation occur here. So the rest look like similar. So this is uh, superimposed be uh, between these two 3D structure in space. And the position that affected here at the position of 240. Okay. So where this alanin, the normal types or the wall, I mean, the, the normal, I mean, the wall type sequence alanin replaced by proline. So this is a close-up view of the replacement. Eh? So they've been given a the color, okay? So to get uh, to indicate about the alanine position was I mean from I mean to the to the proline. So this is a zooming of this uh, affected uh, sequence. All right, and this is the result from the RMSD value. So how they differ? So the the effect of mutation. So by referring to the model number one versus model number two here. So it's not uh, 0, 0 So means that there's a slight change in of, in terms of the RMSC value. So 0 0.06. It's not again 0 0.06. Okay. So you got two places where the motion happened or occur. And even a bigger, bigger change in terms of the 3D shape or 3D structure or confirmation of the protein that being affected here. So this is mutation uh, two at uh, position uh, 240. So where this alanine re re be replaced by uh, proline. Okay, now to the second last part of the uh, uh, presentation. So the about uh, the I mean this uh, what's called it OPG. So this OPG is a uh, para I mean para uh, panoramic uh, radiograph. Okay, so observe where this uh, to indicate about the abnormal sequence. I mean animal so the animal structure of tooth or the effect of mutation that happened that being reported here. So this. Uh, by Rufus Peppers uh, Liang, eh, 2016. And this uh, looking at the uh, replacement of methionine at position number one to, re uh, to be replaced by uh, arginine. Eh? 
So this due to the mutation happen uh, at the DNA level. So the timing uh, being changed or uh, re replaced by guanine. So this is uh, the base nucleotide in the DNA. So the result to that, okay, the result to that, uh, methionine uh, amino acid being replaced to arginine. And this again reported by uh, Liang, of course, uh, accepted from the Liang papers. So abnormally, uh, abnormally shaped upper la lateral and also upper canine. So this is being presented by this insertion or this OPG uh, diagram. So this is another one. So where at position uh, number six, so glycine replaced by arginine. Okay. So this is uh, due to the guanine replaced uh, to, I mean, al I mean uh, adenine. Yeah? And the result to that being shown from the table earlier, so 0 0.06 uh, are strong. Right? And these are uh, referring to the papers by uh, Wong, 2009. And this summary uh, of the phenotype that affected as a result of the mutation happened at that, at that particular position. Okay, so this is another uh, location okay, which involved in the uh, changes in the, what will it, the residue there. So serine by lysine and the value uh, 0 0.06 and strong. And this, uh, again, paper by Wong, 2009. So this is uh, the basic impact of the mutation happened at that particular position, 43. Yeah? Okay. And this is uh, referring to the model uh, two. So mutation number, I mean, mutation two. So which only one mutation observed here from the length, I mean, the second model there. So to cover only one mutation happened at position, I mean, observed from the, I mean, at the position uh, 240. Okay. So where this alanine replaced by proline. And the fact to that, so these are numbers of paper there. So these are uh, the result or the outcome from this uh, paper that been published. Okay. So this uh, no association. So as a result of this mutation happened at that particular position. So these uh, papers by Pan. So at all, 2008. So this seen the unaffected individual. So even though that present uh, the mutation at this position, even, even though, even though you see that the figure Observe this, they could uh, significant uh, different about, uh, about uh, the, the shape of the uh, protein structure. So, at the, call it, uh, the second part based on the model two here. So, and then another paper reported uh, uh, later, 2012, by Liu et al. So, this is uh, to, to, uh, to, re to report that uh, the weak association of the abnormal shape of the tooth, hypodontia. So with LLC, so this be reported by this paper. Okay, to conclude. So point mutation that uh, being presented earlier on the PEX9 gene, so they cause a change in the amino acid residue, but they still uh, call it uh, still ongoing research done. So they still uh, call it, uh, call it uh, being being seen. So even though I may said the same uh, thing in terms of the limitation to cover the whole line of the se sequence and also put mutation that happen or occur throughout the structure of PAX9 uh, protein there. So this is a possible uh, structural change of varying degree depending on the where this mutation happened on the PAX9 gene there. Okay, so I will hope uh, by using this bioinformatic approach or uh, compositional biology approach, so could be applied in, uh, I mean, uh, for further study we done, targeting, I mean, of course, our subject here, looking at uh, how the effect of this uh, in uh, Homo sapiens PEX9 gene there. Okay, so these are uh, numbers of selected uh, references for this uh, publication, I mean, for this uh, presentation. Okay, you get a lot more there, but this is selected not about four. Okay, so with that, I'll end uh, my second presentation. Okay, thank you. Back to, I mean, over to you, uh, Dr. Shafiq. Thank you, Dr. Ahmad. Uh, any question from the floor? Oh, sorry, from the audience. <laughs> there is one question from uh, yeah. from Gemi. Okay, right. Go ahead. Uh, uh, okay, man on the street question, just like my question earlier. What is actually the cause of this mutation? You get point the mutation of, for uh, PEX nineteen uh, for PEX nine, okay. for instance. What is what is the cause actually? Can the okay. Then, then this okay. will uh, prevent the mutation rather than coping with the effect. You know? So we are doing preventive rather than corrective. Okay, can that be yes. okay, thank, yes. thank you, thank you very much for the question. 
So numbers of uh, factors that may contribute to the mutation, uh, even though at various levels. So basically, the, the mutation be divided into uh, two main two main uh, the mutation that may cause to. I mean, they may result to that. So numbers uh, we call it a point mutation, and the more severe one they call it uh, uh, what's called frame shift mutation. They may result to the malfunction of the normal the normal biological function of those protein. But the back to the question. So what the the causes to that? So the prime cause due to number of uh, call, I mean number of causes. So some of them due to the exposure to various uh, mutagenic agent. Okay, so they call it uh, the chem the chemical exposure. So they made it to that, and the another one uh, due to the exposure to the radiation. I mean, uh, uh, call it uh, to uh, even sunlight. Okay, exposure to the sunlight. Uh, they may lead to this uh, what's called it uh, mutation. But the question is how much the exposure to the kind of uh, sun rays that may result to this condition. But the most important, uh, the most uh, call it. Uh, if, I mean, the most uh, cause to that uh, mutation due to the exposure to the duration and chemical reaction. So they may lead to this condition. So then, mm -hmm. uh, some due to the, the, the mutation that occur due to the, your, the, the place where you are working. So some, some uh, people, they may, may call it, uh, call it uh, working at the uh, location or area where there is a uh, very high level of uh, radiation, of, uh, I mean, at that, I mean, in workplace. I see. Is this a point mutation PAX9 uh, mm -hmm. like, like uh, you know, happen in the family? You know, if I have it, my children will have it too. Is there a possibility like that? So this depends on, uh, okay, to answer your question, Dr. Shafi, so this depends on where this mutation happened. If uh, the mutation happened at the chromosome, I mean at the chromosome level, so uh. we have to divide the chromosome into two, basically. So we call it the, the autosomal chromosome. And the second, the sex chromosome, the one that you are asking about whether it is being inherited to the next generation. I mean, your your offspring or your son or daughter. Yeah. So if the mutation or this point mutation happen at the uh, X chromosome or sex chromosome X O Y, mm -hmm. so there is uh, the high chance that being uh, inherited to the next generation if the mutation happen at the autosomal. So basically, okay. that less chance to be inherited to the next generation. So okay. they being called as autosomal mutation, and the second, the sex sex uh, mutation that happen either to the X or to the Y chromosome. The, for if the mutation happen at the Y chromosome, they call it Hollenrich. So this is uh, the, the 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 type of mutation that happen at the Y chromosome okay. in human. Okay, thanks. Thank you for that. All right. Any other question, please, from the audience? No question. Our dental are all good, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys. Um, thank you very much, Dr. Ahmad. You're actually, welcome. Actually, so we'll see you see again. Your papers are very interesting to me uh, because I'm from different field. All right. I'm a social okay. science guy, actually. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. And, and 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 management, you know. So this is new to me, but it's quite interesting for me personally. I hope. Uh, the rest of the participant, the rest of the <clears throat> audience will uh, will find some um, some learning also, so a certain level of education, you know, for all of us, based on the Thank presentation provided by Dr. Ahmad. Thank you very much. Right. Dr. Ahmad, we'll have okay. another two papers later, yeah. uh, later to the end of the session, okay? So, right. Thank you very much. <laughs> the next one will be, let me call upon... Uh, uh, how how can I, I share this this the slide here? I mean uh, the the two presentation here. So no need to unshare, right? So this automatic, you, right? You, you, uh, you, can, you can uh, you can unshare if you like. You 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 can stay that is and as 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 it is, no problem. Ah uh, okay, I got yeah. Stop and share. Uh, I like to call upon uh, uh, Adele. Are you ready? Yes, I'm ready in the whole topic. Okay, all right. You set your presentation. Yeah. You you share your your screen with us. Yeah. Uh, um, Mr. Gami will help me to uh, share my presentation. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, I will start. <laughs> Can I can I start now, Dr. Safi? Yeah, yeah, go on, go on. Yeah, okay. Yeah, uh, good good afternoon. Oh, okay, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my good name afternoon. is Clarissa Adeline, 
Yeah, I'm on behalf of my team uh, with Kamalia Paulus and also Rizal Parani from uh, Pelita Harapan University, Tangerang, Indonesia. And today we would like to uh, present about uh, our research. Uh, the topic is the use of peer victimization in non trauma television programs to gain rating. And we use the case study is uh, private television stations in Indonesia. Next. So, yeah. We all know that um, mass media plays an important role in our daily life as a society and where media is the source uh, for information and communication and also entertainment. And different from the other mediums, mass media has um, the capability to reach a wider uh, audience, especially when we talk about uh, how mass media have the ability to change people's behavior faster than the other mediums because it's uh, characteristic. And um, in Indonesia itself, uh, mass media are dominated by TV stations. Maybe it's because uh, the internet infrastructure is not yet spread evenly uh, in every area. So uh, most of people still use TV as the main source of information and entertainment. Okay, next. Okay, this is where um, the problem starts. So because uh, very tough <laughs> competitions within uh, TV stations. Uh, television stations need to um, attract more audience to increasing their rating and shares. Why, uh, next, why is um, rating and share is important? Because, well, we all know that rating and share is a benchmark to determine the quality of the TV stations or the TV program itself. So um, that's why the higher the rating is, the more advertisers will um, sell their products on uh, their TV stations. And therefore, to uh, get a wider audience coverage, TV stations um, have to keep producing contents that can meet uh, with the audience taste um, through their TV programs, especially through entertainment TV programs. And this is a part of um, non-drama television program. So entertainment is part of non-drama television program. Uh, next. So, uh, Maybe you wondering why entertainment TV programs? Because uh, from the previous research, we know that entertainment is the backbone of TV stations and televisions uh, is relying on internet entertainment TV programs. And it because people um, tend to use television as a major source of entertainment more than source of information. And Indonesian Broadcast Commissioner also stated that 60% of society um, prefer to watch entertainment programs rather than information programs such as news. And um, based on that data, we all know that uh, internet, entertainment TV programs become the most uh, consumed program. Therefore, uh, we need rules or uh, ethics to uh, as a guideline in the process of the making of entertainment TV programs. And in this case, uh, Komisi Penyiaran Indonesia, KPI, or in English, uh, Indonesian Broadcasting Commission, has uh, already set the guidelines uh, it, or uh, broadcast program standards to set um, boundaries like what TV can do or cannot do in the making process of entertainment television program. And the rules uh, is mostly talks about how to respect uh, other religion or to respect other uh, races, genders, and social or economic living. And also uh, there are rules about how to respect another marginal groups or people with certain physical conditions. Mm -hmm. But uh, here comes the problem. Next, is it coming? Okay, this is, where, this is where the problem is. Nowadays, uh, many televisions violate this ethics because they need to um, adjust the content with the audience taste, uh, which in here people or the audience tends to prefer exploitative contents such, um, such as uh, drama or gimmick or not respecting other behavior. And that's why, next. That's why um, this study want to see how actually TV shows use uh, peer victimization to gain rating and uh, we are focusing on non-trauma entertainment tv programs such as uh, variety shows or comedy shows because uh, it has a deeper relation with the audience next the 
Yeah, the theory that we use here is uh, agenda setting theory because we want to see how media determine issue or image that they want the audience to see. And there are three main stages in uh, agenda setting theory. The first one is how media set the issue or we call it a uh, media agenda. And then the next one is how media agenda meet the public so it become the public agenda and then lastly is how the public agenda meet the uh, decision makers and become the policy agenda but um in this study we only gonna focus on uh the media agenda so this theory will help us to see how actually uh, media is not just an aspiration directing tools but also how media arrange message and contents to fulfill the media industry interests and this may um indirectly also affecting the public and then the next one the next concept we use is electronic mass media or NTV programs first um, as i mentioned before electronic mass media in this case of uh, television is one of the most uh, effective mediums to delivering a direct message to the white society and in this research we want to see uh, electronic mass media as an actor of social change with wider context. Well, in other words, we have to um, firstly analyze how the correlations between the televisions and the society or audience, where audience has the deep uh, connections and personal involvement with the reality that's shown in the television programs. And this uh, relation creates a new spectrum where it can affect uh, audience behavior and sometimes it can trigger audience aggressive behavior through what was shown by the television program, especially uh, violence behavior like uh, bullying. And in this context, we use the concept of peer victimization uh, and not bullying because uh, basically uh, both peer victimization and also bullying has overlapping complex con concept where um, peer victimization is a part of bullying. And both concepts describe an intimidation behavior from harassment, uh, physical violence, verbal violence, such as uh, mocking or name calling. But uh, what makes it, makes it different is uh, in peer, peer victimization, there's no imbalance power. But um, peer victimization is referred to assault from colleague or peer, and the victim of victimization is uh, become the target of the bullying in the group and in, in that group. But uh, more, more, more than that, some previous research shown that um, peer victimization is a repetitive act, but not intended to um, hurt hurt other people. But because of that, uh, peer victimization sometimes is seen as something um, usual or something normal, and sometimes also being ignored. So that's why we choose the concept of peer victimizations. Yes, next. In this research, we use qualitative, qualitative approach and using case study method because uh, we think it's relevant for the study where um, case study is a method to see a real life context where on this research, peer victimizations are the actual cases that um, frequently happen in non-drama television programs. And for data collections, uh, we used that interview with three informants. The first one is uh, Bupai. He is an executive producer of comedy variety shows program from XYZ Television, is a synonym. And also Irwan, uh, he is a creative producer from Alang Televisions. And also Ani, uh, she is a former member of LSF or Film Censorship Agency. And also uh, KPID or um, Indonesian Broadcast Commission in uh, each region. And for data sampling, we use non-random sampling with, I'm sorry, no. uh, for data sampling, we use um, non-random sampling with purposive method because uh, we choose the research subject purposely, pur purposely based on some considerations such as um, experience. And uh, we use three stages of analyzing. First, we um, simpl simplify the data that we get uh, in the field, and then we try to um, understand and analyze the data. And lastly, we draw into the conclusions. And to check the validity of reliability of the data, we use um, source and data triangulations to um, take information from uh, interview and also from observations. Next. Uh, 
okay, um, for the result, uh, this study found that um, television crew use peer victimization or victim role in their non-traumatic programs to gain rating. Well, the victim role will be an object of ridicule to make um, people laugh as the competition, well, as the company of TV stations um, broadcasts are getting higher, the TV crew making more effort to find ways um, in order for the television programs they produce will gain high rating. Irwan, uh, the creative producer that uh, I said before, stated that they use victim role to be an icebreaker in their TV program. Uh, this is also to light up the atmosphere uh, because idea, because of the most audience like it. So audience like to watch another person to be bullied and also mock. So uh, basically the role of a victim, victim role uh, is to attract fewer to watch the programs because uh, people like it. And when they like it, it can rating and also uh, effort time, advertisements here. Yeah. And the higher the rating is, uh, the more advertisement will uh, be placed in the program. Next. Uh, okay, perfectimization as uh, bullying. So uh, as I explained earlier, perfectimization is part of bullying. And in this study, we found that TV programs don't use um, physical bullying, but they use um, verbal and gestural behavior to corner someone or um, to make audience laugh. Uh, in here, Ubai said that um, media crews intentionally put peer victimization and they don't really violate the rules about um, physical violence. So they still in uh, following the guidelines. Next. Peer victimization planning in non-traumatic programs. Uh, just like uh, in agenda setting theory, this victim role is planned and designed before the production. Uh, the, the first, First, firstly, uh, TV crews do um, brainstorming that result uh, as a script to be used in the shows. And Ubai also stated here that all the concept is intentional. They want to, uh, the actor who plays as a victim role uh, to make people laugh and build a, a comedy or a, a funny atmosphere that that expected in the storyline. And it happens because the audience like it and it can meet the audience taste. And because of uh, most viewers or audience are from um, middle, low economic class and don't have higher educations. So they don't really like a heavy thinking show. And the next one uh, the, about the rules and ethics um, uh, is from LSF and LSF is a film sensor, censorship agency and uh, KPI, as I stated before, is, is Indonesia Broadcasting Commissions. Uh, well, actually, both of these organizations already made a quite strict rules to stop bullying act in TV programs, but um, the rules might still be violated by the TV groups because uh, they often interpreted the rules differently from what is shown in the uh, in the in the guidelines and that makes the standard of the rules uh, quite lower and just like you know in in the law in the court where it can be interpreted um, differently by the prosecutor and also the judges next one so um, higher number of television stations uh, makes a tighter competition between TV stations for rating and advertisements here and um, the TV crews conclude that a uh, victim role and peer victimization in non trauma TV program will still continue. And it is uh, still hard to be eliminated, eliminated since um, the media crews consider the victim role is um, important to um, attract audience view. And eventually we can see that um, televisions are having standard gradation in order to adjust to the audience taste who are um, mostly from the middle lower economic class of people. But um, televisions uh, should find a way to produce, pro to produce interesting shows without um, using peer victimization because uh, television, as we know, as we stated before, has a big impact on its audience life. Um, that's all from us. Uh, thank you. If there's any questions, well, we would like to answer. Thank you.
All right. Thank you, Adele. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Any, any, any questions from from the from the audience? This is also an interesting presentation, actually. I'm proud, proud. Any question? I want Hi, to. Hi, Go on. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, I have one question. If a TV station violates the rules of LSF and TPI, what will they do? Uh, how they handle it? Thank oh, you, Deborah. Um, okay, um, thank you for uh, the questions. So far, uh, when, uh, when the TV stations violate um, the rules, uh, there actually, there's no um, the punishment. So it's only uh, the warning, a warning. So like, uh, or if the violence is too much or uh, yeah, they, they will like uh, stop the show from airing just that, but there's no like the real punishment or uh, from the government or, or, or other uh, organizations. So, but uh, our suggestions is uh, there, there should be uh, a punishment uh, from government. So it's just a warning. That's Okay, thank you. I, I have a question, a simple one. Okay. Uh, maybe it's, uh, if, you, if you have, uh, if you don't have, it is fine. The demographic of the TV audience, you know? Uh, demographic means, you know, who most watch TV among the audience. Are they in the, you know, age of 20s, maybe 20 to 30, maybe professionals, students you know um, <clears throat> once once you have that profile uh, for, 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 for this purpose basically the the producers will will ha will have uh, can can actually plan how they want to produce their program according to the profile of the audience mostly okay I personally don't watch TV so much. I can get news from YouTube, you know. <laughs> uh, I can get entertainment also from YouTube, Instagram, mm -hmm. uh, Facebook, and so on. So watching TV is becoming uh, to me as a burden. But that is my age, maybe. Mm -hmm. Maybe young guys like you, you people maybe are still watching TV at least two hours a day or one hour a day, you know, uh, for that matter. Because there are some programs that attract to the maybe younger generation of audience. But if you have the data of the demographic, then this peer victimization is does it happen in a program that is specifically tailored for that particular group of audience? Yeah, because yeah. Uh, I think this one you 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 probably I tell you you take in general the the audience of TV basically you're saying that seventy two percent. You know, there's a slide that you mentioned about the uh, the the type of audience who who watch the TV actually. Satu. Yang kedua, saya mau tanya juga, this peer victimization is, um, <clears throat> I, I believe there are a lot of literatures before, uh, written by the, by the uh, uh, you know, researchers before, in previous years, you know. So maybe, how, how do you de define peer victimization, whether it is, um, whether the government, where do you draw the line? That it is, yes, it is peer victimization. No, this is not, you know. So the definition, I think, is, is a little vague that even uh, there is always a going back and forth between the TV producers and also the government who want to enforce certain rule and regulation toward uh, this matter. So from previous literature, do you find that there are any, you know, quite conclusive um, uh, definition about peer victimization that can be used, you know. So that, that's probably you can add in your paper later if you, if you, if you like. <clears throat> and then, of course, like you said, it is normally done on purpose by the producers to attract more audience to their program. Yeah. All right. And actually, it's more like a make fun of people degrading in a way but to the to the mass they saw that as a as funny you know it's, it's fun 
it's fun to degrade people you know <laughs> mm. <laughs> and then uh, the impact of this peer victimization what will be the impact maybe you can also uh, write down in, in the paper ad the impact to an individual where 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 is it? does it impact their confidence okay does it impact their mental and cognitive development okay does it impact their uh, work rate if it is happening in the office you know peer victimization if it happens in the social gathering you have become uh, individually can become introvert you know people who don't who don't know how to socialize much because he's a victim of joke you know among his friend and colleague so this this the, the impact maybe you like to to put some paragraph or um, you know description in the in the literature or introduction the impact of this peer victimization it is bad definitely it is bad but you can cite some article how how bad it is actually affecting the society <clears throat> Okay. Uh, so uh, another one, yeah, that another one. Basically, okay. maybe you can propose also, because this is an interesting subject. You can propose also. I mean, <laughs> how how TV station want to, you know, increase and sustain their uh, their rating, okay, to attract at the same time sustain the level of audience for for, for their program. What are the alternatives available besides, you know, whether they purposely do it or not purposely do it, uh, this peer victimization, okay? Maybe kita sebagai penyelidik harus juga memberi pandangan ya kepada, uh, especially the TV producers, how they can actually find the alternative to attract the audience to their program, other than uh, peer victimization. I guess that, that's, that's all I have. Maybe you can improve a bit on your paper to make it more, more, more complete and, and, and comprehensive. Oh, okay. Uh, can, can we uh, give the feedback or? No, that, that's a feedback from me, Judy. You, you don't have oh, to okay, okay. answer, yeah? That is a feedback from me. And you can add to your paper if you have the time. If you don't, that is fine, maybe. You are going to write another paper. Yeah, based from my experience, I have a set of data. Actually, I write one, two, three papers, and then I find that I can still write another paper from the same set of data, you know, looking from a different, different perspective. Okay. Thank so you for your valuable uh, comment, uh, Dr. Shafi, but I would like to give a little bit, uh, just a small comment in here. Mm. Uh, probably, I don't know in Malaysia uh, whether it's happening or not, but in Indonesia nowadays, you know, like um, we have like what they call it a uh, uh, variety show. Maybe you know, like variety show is more like uh, really, uh, yeah, the combining, you know, between music and then uh, joking, and then uh, mungkin yeah. Pak Gami bisa bantu nanti kira-kira. Jadi uh, that kind of variety show. Um, hmm are very popular for uh, some of our private uh, televisions, you know. And uh, the rating is uh, a very, very high. You know. People like to watch it, particularly for uh, those, you know, uh, who come from the uh, middle, lower uh, uh, status, you know. And mm -hmm. uh, what they like is they like something sensational, you know. So, and peer victimization is one of the... I don't know, a kind of popular uh, uh, viewing, you know, yeah, for the people from, from, from middle to lower class, you know, that uh, why, you know, a lot of uh, somehow, you know, ads and, you know, TV like to, uh, to have it because they got a lot of money from the advertisement and everything, yes. you know, yes. so that's why uh, they do not also move from that, you know, because on, on the one hand, uh, is a, you know we uh, they, they, uh, we, we know that they, they are living in the uh, capitalism world you know so they, they yes, can't move from that you know but on, on the other hand uh, as well 
uh, they have to meet the, the ethic conduct from there. So sometimes, uh, you know, from the commission like uh, KPI or whatever Indonesian uh, uh, watch uh, uh, commission, television commission, sometimes they try to close their eyes, you know, on doing that. You know, sometimes that, that even I agree with what you said, bad influence for the viewing and we know that uh, mostly of our um, population you know they still live in a rural area but uh yeah that kind of uh, uh program sometimes giving a bad impact for, for for them so that's that's a bit difficult you know on the one hand we talk about money on the other hand we talk about ethics so sometimes this is become uh uh yeah uh big uh somehow a big argument you know which one that we have to put in a priority first you know that's a bit my, my small comment there. but anyway thank you so much dr sapi thank you and uh, one of uh, our team is actually pak gami is the senior uh media uh officer uh i think pak gami involved uh more than uh, 20 years in our television media maybe pak gami would like to share about a little bit about uh his Yes. Yeah, yeah. Please, Pak Gami. Yes. Uh, mm, to respond about uh, your comments, Dr. Safi. Yes. Uh, the demography of of TV audience in Indonesia is mostly housewife and children, which is uh, like sixty to seventy persons are dominated by housewives or, or females and uh, children. So uh, peer victimization is, uh, uh, I think it has a big impact for the children because uh, the, the behavior of putting someone in corner and make someone become uh, like, a, like a comedy or uh, make someone uh, become the target of uh, the, you know, the, the humor or the laugh. Uh, will be contagious to the children, will be something that children can uh, copy in their life. That's what uh, to be worried about. So the, uh, the, the movie censorship agency at Indonesian Broadcasting Commission is actually, they have already like uh, certain and quite complete rules as I read in their books here. But the problem is like, uh, like a law in the court, it's, Always, there is a different interpretation. Uh, it's the same thing as uh, the rules from the KPI and LSF. That the TV crews always try to interpret differently or make it the uh, the standard is lower. Something. So they, uh, so it looks like it's something normal, but actually, in uh, actually, it can contagious can can be contagious to the children. Mm and this was, uh, so it's quite challenging actually to uh, to set up the standard of the bullying and the peer victimization in, in TV media so we uh, I thank you also uh, for your um, for your advice for us to give uh, to add the how the TV station can attract the audience without using the mm. The peer victimization. There is another strategy. It's it has been very challenging for us because it's uh, we try something else, but uh, as the audience of Indonesian, uh, yeah, on of the, uh, the of the TV audience in Indonesia is mostly lower class of people, so they really love they really love uh, to watch some someone being bullied, someone being the target. Of a bully and they laugh. That's what something they they really like it. So yeah, we are uh, the TV media. They have been trying to find another ways to really shift the 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 standard, but it is very challenging actually. For mm. other mm. I think yeah, bottom line is so long the audience love the jokes. You know, yes. <laughs> the way we define like you know. You, be, you, you you bully your peer, you know, you make fun of your peer, you, your peer and so on, and you create jokes about your colleague or your peers and so on. It's becoming like a norm rather than an uh, uh, exception, you know. So as long as the society is still, uh, still accepts, yeah, <laughs> in our community yes, that, yes. that the way it is, then 
uh, this business, this type of, uh, you know, you call it uh, peer victimization will still continue, you know. Definitely. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Definitely will still so continue. The like uh, actually the way to avoid it is uh, not to make the program live on air so make it uh, like a tape program so we can edit so the the censorship uh, the movie censorship uh, agency can edit and can uh, can watch it first before yeah. on air so that is actually our in our strategy because if yeah, it is yeah. But, but we cannot, uh, we cannot the comedian <laughs> to act and to make jokes. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes. Some program got banned also, Pak. Uh, many actually. Uh, apa yang Rafi Ahmad itu? Uh, they got banned actually. Uh, 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 what's that called? The program apa yang Rafi Ahmad? The variety show? Um, uh, it, uh, apa, what, I forgot really? suddenly the name it of the variety, variety show. show? Yes, there's a variety and reality show. Variety. They got banned. Okay. You know, many, many got banned because of the government thought it's already uh, beyond, you know, and, and exceeds, you know, the, 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 the ethics standard, you know. Mm. So, yeah, some, they got banned. Some. So, yeah. talk show as well, you know, talk show. We have a very popular talk show. Uh, apa, uh, Tukul, apa yang namanya? Tukul Arwana itu. Why all of a sudden I forget all the names, you know, right? Mata. Ada yang tahu mungkin? Empat mata. Empat mata. Uh, empat mata, mata yeah. you know. They got banned, you know. However, they just uh, change a little name and move to other TV station, you know, in order to move. And they they, they, they try to somehow uh, recreate and becomes... reformat the, the programs again. Yeah. Sometimes they are very tricky as well. <laughs> we, we we have the same problem here yeah, in mata. Malaysia. So it's, I think it's quite a yeah. common problem around the world. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's why, I mean. So... <clears throat> Um, it, it's not a question we have to live with it. I think it is a question like, okay, Adele and uh, and the team has raised a certain degree of awareness, okay, about this problem. So we, yes, as a researchers in the academic field, we have to push forward with our research. You know, we have to, yes, you know, <clears throat> we have to flood the community with this information, with this awareness level, so that the audience will somehow pick up. Whether it is sooner or later, that our society will become more, uh, more, more informed first, more knowledgeable. Our society will become like a, a decent, more decent, and so on. So maybe program like this will not attract our society anymore in the future, with the correct level of awareness that we have, that we receive. So yes. this is a, a program. This is a, an initiative that must be going on all the time. Yeah. Okay, uh, government, uh, people, and also the media itself, they need to work it together. Can't, yes, can't get it. I agree yes. with that. I agree with that. Yeah. I mean, you, you look from the commercial perspective, hey, I have yes. to keep my TV station yeah. alive, you know. I have to feed my people here. I have 100 stuff. Yeah, <laughs> yes, that's true. So that's we true. understand that also, okay? But, so we have to find somewhere in between that hopefully can... Uh, increase the awareness, reduce this peer victimization. At the same time, the TV station still make money. Yes. Yep. So thank you, Adele. Uh, do you like thank a five-minute break? No? Five-minute break? Do you like five-minute break? Yes, why not? Yes. yes why not? Yeah, okay. We take five-minute break. You, go, you can go, uh, you know, freshen up and then have your coffee. Um, ease yourself and then um, we come back in five minutes, all right? Jawa Barat itu <coughs> banyak orang Sunda ya? Jawa Barat banyak orang Sunda, iya Pak. Iya. Berapa ramai ya Sunda populasi ini. orang Sunda di Jawa Barat itu? Oh, I don't know. Hmm. I've never... <laughs> Can <we> check? <laughs> ada, ada siapa di sini <laughs> orang Sunda? Ada? Orang Sunda... Uh, Mr. Uyung. Mr. Uyung. Ya, Mr. Uyung. Uh, no, I'm from. Right? Bapak, Bapak Actually, I'm from kan? Jawa. No, no, no. I'm from Jawa. From uh, Jawa. You're from Jawa. Okay. Well, actually, Pak, if you talk about Sundanese, Sundanese is more you talk about ethnic, ya Pak, ya ethnicity, ya Pak, ya Sundanese. And yes, yes. if you talk about Jawa Barat, actually Jawa Barat used to be uh, quite, you know, in before uh, 2010, Jawa Barat, Jawa Barat uh, was quite big, you know, and then. 
uh, now divided into Provinsi Banten. So now Jawa Barat itself is, is Jawa Barat with the capital city Bandung. Yes. And then uh, some part of Jawa Barat, you know, has their uh, had their autonomy uh, since to, uh, 20, 2010 uh, and called the area of Banten area. You okay. know, Banten, Banten, yeah. provincial yeah. Uh, Banten, and Banten uh, is quite well known because of uh, the you know the the growth of the uh, uh, Islam culture in that area. Okay. Okay. All right, so okay. jadi sekarang ada terpisah pak ya. So there are uh, Jawa Barat itself separated into two parts. You know, uh, first is Jawa Barat itself with the capital city uh, Bandung, and then the other one is Banten. The capital city is Tangerang. Okay, great, good. Where, U, good where UPH <laughs> is located? Where UPH <laughs> is located now? Okay. I just and if you in, if you ask about the population, it's it's not difficult to find out. Uh, yes. We can. Yeah, yeah, so we can Google, find from, but from how, Google, yeah, okay. Yeah, but <laughs> however, uh, the census itself uh, usually uh, uh, will be done uh, close to the election, yeah, general election, yeah, Pak, yeah. Jadi, if we, yeah, if yeah. we uh, you know, getting there, so then we know precisely about the number, you know. All right, okay, okay, great. It's written here, uh, 39 million uh, yeah around 40 million is 15 percent of the population of indonesia <laughs> it's quite a lot yeah, you know so, <laughs> yeah. it is it is, it is. It's quite a 40 lot. million okay. it's like one nation yeah yeah okay coming back to the to uph yeah uh itu itu dalam google saya saya <coughs> ketemu itu ada apa mengatakan ini the first university that that uh, you know the medium of his instruction is english is, uh, is that right yes this before the pandemic we we used to have the international class however to, uh, you know because of this and that the pandemic so and now uh, we just have the regular class rather than uh, you know separated with international and uh, regular class you know mm. uh, we also have the uh, dela apa del kamu <laughs> Is uh, learning yeah, distance. I'm from uh, online learning. Online learning. Yeah, online so. learning as well. I see. Age. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you for that. All right. Uh, Pak Dr. Safi. Yeah. Dari uh, Mara University. Yeah, saya. Are you coming from a uh, communication department or I mean no, or no, I'm social? No, I'm from a uh, faculty of business and management. Ah, all right then. All yeah. right then. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Mara, which Mara? In the Shah Alam one or in where? Uh, the, the Puncak Alam one. Oh, Puncak Alam, not the Shah okay. Alam. Yeah. University Technology Mara is is large actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It is. Uh, they have so many branches. Okay. <clears throat> For every state in Malaysia, Malaysia has got fourteen states. They have a, a, a University Technology Mara. You know, <clears throat> established mm -hmm. in every state. And some state have more than one University Technology Mara branches. Okay, so I'm attached to the one uh, in Puncak Alam, which is which belong to the state of Selangor actually. Selangor. So there's a university for Selangor branch. All right. Okay. <clears throat> so um, can we can we continue now our program? Yes, please. Yes. Please. Right. The next one is Dr. Nashira, but as I inform Dr. Nashira, is not able to join our conference today. So next, I would like to call Dr. Grace Chan. Are you ready, Dr. Grace? Hello. Okay, just a little bit. I, I know Dr. Grace from, uh, from a previous contact. Dr. Grace attended uh, our conference, one of our conference in Penang in 2019, in July 2019. Uh, so she presented her paper there in in, in Penang, and then <clears throat> at the same time also we uh, uh, she graciously took the role as a moderator. So because we have many participants, so we have uh, several um, <clears throat> parallel sessions. So she actually moderated one of the one of the uh, conference room. So that is the contact that we have, and we, we, we have also several contacts after that. 
via email because of her publication and so on. So uh, it's nice to, to have her back actually. Dr. Grace is not in yet. So if it is not in yet, is Dinara ready? I think supposed to be uh, Bu Susi dulu ya, if I'm not mistaken ya. Eh, Bu Susi ya? Yeah, and then a follow up with Ibu Grace, is Dr. Yeah. Grace, and then, uh, and, then, and then Dinara would be the last. Ya, maafkan saya Bu Susi, Bu Susi ma. It's okay, no problem, Dr. Sapi. Thank you, Rizaldi, thank you. Okay, okay, no let's problem. have Bu Susi. Uh, welcome, Bu Susi, to to to, to present the paper. Uh, you have your team right here, Dandy, Diahana, yes, the Dian big Atika, team, and also uh, Pak Uyung, very big team. Yeah, should be yes, right. One. The big okay. team. Okay, now okay. the floor is yours. Thank you, thank you, uh, Mr. Uh, Safi of Chairman Conference. Uh, I am pre present my group. Uh, you said that we are a big group. <laughs> and Pak Uyung will help me to share the presentation. Can we start now, Pak Uyung? Thank wait, wait, you. Wait. I have a problem with the computer. <laughs> There are, uh, I'm Katarina Susitri Putranti, and there are Pak Uyung, then Dian Artika, uh, Dandi, and Dea Hana, and will help me to answer and present. Maybe I want to present, then uh, when you have uh, any question, maybe my friends will help us and we want to uh, answer the question together properly. Can you, Pak Uyu? Dian will back up me because I have problem with computer. Okay. Okay. I can see the PowerPoint, Pak Uyu. Good afternoon, uh, Dr. Safei. Uh, good afternoon, all delegates. Thank you for this time. Uh, I'm represent that I mentioned before. I'm Katarina Susitri Putranti, and uh, there are Pak Uyung Pramudiarja, Dea Hana Prabawati, Dian Artika, dan Di Prawira, and we are all from Pelita Harapan University Tangerang, Indonesia. I want to present the strategies of the PKKBN for socializing family planning programs for Generation Z in Indonesia through Instagram. Uh, the PKKBN is a institute, a government institute that responsible for the uh, arrange the family planning in Indonesia. And we state that the problem of early marriage in Indonesia remains unresolved and must be seriously considered. So this is the data. Indonesia ranks second in Asia and eighth in the world for cases of underage marriage. Even 22 of 34 provinces in Indonesia have a higher rate of early marriage than the national average rate. Uh, Next. Which so, Sorry, Pak, Pak uh, Bu, Bu Susi. Uh, which country rate yeah, yeah. rank first actually in ASEAN? Uh, yeah, in ASEAN, uh, rank the second in ASEAN. Yeah, the first uh, one? This is from the committed. The first one is the uh, Sri Lanka. Oh, Sri hmm. Lanka is not ASEAN. Uh, not oh. ASEAN, Asia. Oh, wait, wait. Uh, I just want to check it first. Okay. Okay, I, I will I, I will tell you later. Okay, no problem, uh, no problem. About the first the first uh thing. um uh, uh because we concern the the Indonesian the Indonesian ranks. Yeah, yeah, so, okay. Okay, okay. So the problem is uh next Pak Uyung, the problem in Indonesia should be resolved immediately. How to socialize and educate the younger generation to understand the impact of early marriage. We know many young people do not care about the ideal future life. Then how to say and what channels should be used to be effectively for younger generation because physical and mental health factors have the most impact on early marriage, which young people 
most more critical and have a concern about their future. Who is younger generation? Next, Pak William. They are called the Generation Z. They were born between 1997 to 2012. Generation Z is a multitasking generation that is able to do multiple activities at one time. Their activities relate to the online world. So they are is one of the main target for BKKBN. BKKBN, a uh, national population and family planning agency, yeah? we mm. know, uh, in educating to important of merits at the ideal age. How far they are, how big they are, there are 74.93 million Indonesian people, means 27.94%. This is the highest group than another uh, group like millennial, Gen X, baby boomers, baby boomers. So I think Generation Z, uh, also known as the internet generation, because we know they were born in the uh, digital era. Yeah. And they are multi tasking and they're familiar with the gadget. And we believe that Instagram is the, the latest media social. Instagram is believed to be one of the suitable media for interacts with the Generation Z. Next, Pak William. The Instagram in Indonesia is most popular. Uh, for a primary in the uh, uh, generation Z, and there are a big, a big amount Instagram user in Indonesia reach eighty five million people, which means eighty five point five percent of the total population. This is a very large number and provides a great opportunity to reach the target means the target of the KKBN. Next, Pak William. So, so uh, Instagram is the big one, is the five big, the most popular social media for adolescents today. Research conducted by Instagram show that adolescents user use it four times more and upload six times more per day than other users. Next volume. And uh, talking about the family, the family is the main order that communicates symbolic value patterns to the new generation so that the family becomes a basic condition for human development as the next generation. Murdoch said and defined the family as a social group that has the characteristic of living together, economic cooperation, and reproduction. Planned family will produce a family that is both biological and psychological. The family is the smallest unit capable of building value before someone acquires them from the outside. So I think the family needs to be planned because good family planning is a mutual agreement between husband and wife that aims to realize the vision that has been decided in a family. This consists of deciding the number of children to have, planning the birth spacing, planning the baby's genders, and planning the use of contraceptives. Next, Pak Wim. And uh, we use the diffusion of innovation theory because it's related with our research uh, from uh, Everett Rogers. He mentioned that the process of social change, which consists of innovation, diffusion, or communication and consequences. So how to develop deliver the campaign of family planning program so that it become a social movement, I think. And uh, he mentioned two diffusion of innovation. Theory has a strong practical purpose in translating the research findings into practices that agencies can use to disseminate innovation more effectively. So Generation Z expect to be peer educator because teens have more trust to their peers than their parents. Next, Pak Uyum. And the diffusion of theory, there are four key elements to increase the rate and effectiveness of dissemination and adoption. The first one is time is key element of diffusion. 
all innovation take time the to diffuse and the goals is to speed up the rate of adoption so the uh, it means BKKBN as an institution that is responsible for population balance will continue to make effort the campaign for family planning programs. The second one, innovation itself. Rate of adoption is determined by perception of the characteristic of the innovation, including its relative advantages, compatible with existing value and experiences, complexity of the innovation, reliability, and observability. Then, communication channel. The type of channel available, available and use can affect the diffusion of new innovation. The channels include interpersonal communication, mass media, and social media. So, Generation Z are familiar with gadgets, including their behavior towards the media. So, that online media is a part of Generation Z's life. Then, the fourth one is social system. Social system has a role in the diffusion of innovation, include various elements, opinion leader, and organizations. So I think BKKBN have to uh, handle the program uh, of innovation, communication channels, social system, have to run all the time. Okay, next, Wao Yung. The goals of the research, uh, we want to analyzing and describing the family planning program campaigns carried out by PKKBN to Generation Z, then describe the campaign strategy carried out by PKKBN to Generation Z. Next, Pak Uyung. And the problem statement, what are the strategies carried out by the National Population and Family Planning Agency in conducting family planning campaigns for the agency in Indonesia? And why does the National Population and Family Planning Agency, means BKKBN, use Instagram to campaign for the family planning program to generate agency is the target of BKKBN. Next, Pak Next, Pak and uh, we use uh, the method, the approach used in this research was qualitative using the case study method and the case of the campaign strategy carried out by BKKBN to Generation C is a case that is still a problem it must be resolved immediately. The data collection process was carried out by in-depth interview with three informants and he is uh, Dr. Mr. Dr. Hastawardoyo, specialist of gynecology. Head of the National Population and Family Planning Agency of the Republic of Indonesia, the, uh, and Mrs. Eka Sulistia Edilingsi. Uh, she is a graduate, a Master of Law, Director of Communication, Information and Education, BKKBN, or the National Republican and Family Planning Agency of the Republic of Indonesia, and Ms. Ciki Sikmiati, Subdirectorate of Monitoring and Evaluations. And she is uh, operate and she direct to handle the BKR. BKR is a uh, Bina Ketahanan Rakyat. It has um, to build that uh, resilience. Next, Pak William. And the result and discussion, uh, we found that family planning uh, from BKKBN estimate they said that estimate 2 million adolescents in Indonesia get married every year. 1.6 million give birth each year. In average, 400 of them are stunting due to undernourishment. So this is maybe the impact of the early marriage. One of BKKBF priority in the future is premenstrual screening. They will launch LC meal in 2022 and application for premarital health screening above all reproduction problems in youth, lack of sex education in consider as the main underlying problem. Sometimes in Indonesia, when we want to talk about the sex education, it is the sensitive uh, topic and we have to be careful if we want to inform the sex education. Uh, next, Pauline. And the campaign strategy of BKKBN, there are several factors that uh, influence BKKBN campaign strategies. First, location based on 
the location and accessibility. BKKBN use two strategies, drone attack and aerial attack. In rural area where there no internet signal, BKKBN relies more on drone attack. Aerial attack is considered more expensive, therefore less commonly used, but uh, it is expected to grow in the future as internet access is become more widely available. And the characteristic of the adolescent, BKKBN divide youth population into two categories, normal and problematic. Problematic means a uh, broken home. There are many uh, broken home children. For the problematic one, BKKBN has a special approach in partnership with uh, the home community. Content to be developed, BKKBN has two core issues regarding to youth, reproductive health, the family planning or marriage preparation. It's of two has different approach delivered through different channel in social media. Um, there are genre Indonesia for reproductive health and siap nikah for marriage preparation. Next, Paul. Uh, this is the account of social media that handle of BKKBN or it is a small uh, social media, there are uh, five social media that handle of BKKBN. Uh, this is the IG account, Instagram account. There are at the Indo official with the uh, 15 followers, 15,000 followers, and BKKBN official at Genry Indonesia, Tiap Nikah underscore official and at skata underscore ID. Uh, there are minutes by Directorate of Communication, Information, and Education by BKKBN uh, because they want to close to Generation Z that use Instagram. Uh, three IG, three three of account Instagram accounts under uh, KIA, Communication, Information, and Education, uh, be in, be in, be in the official and BKKBN official and SCAPA. This is uh, under from KIA, BKKBN, and two of I, uh, account it under BKR. BKR means the Bina Ketahanan Remaja. In English, it may, maybe it has to build your resilience. Next, Pak Uyung. Yeah, this is I mentioned before, collaboration. Uh, Genre Indonesia, account Instagram Genre Indonesia, uh, BKKBN partnership with the doc, Dr. Gen Z from HIPV and uh, account of Siap Nikah underscore Indonesia in partnership with Rumah Perubahan Renat Kasali. Uh, at Stata underscore Indonesia, this is the from John Hopkins University, then uh, followed by BKKBN, and collaboration with various artists like Really Latu Konsiata and Nelly Buslo for Berencana Itu Keren jingle, and they they create the jingle Berencana Itu Keren so so that uh, the song can be sing by Generation Z. Yeah, uh, and really like to Konsiana and Melly is uh, like influencers too, maybe. Okay, next one. Uh, this is the account of Instagram that uh, handled by BKKBN. Uh -huh. In channel, Siap Nikah Official, Kata underscore ID, Genre Indonesia, and BKKBN Official. This is all of account to be uh, too close to Generation Z because Generation Z use uh, Instagram. Next, Pak Wim. And the conclusion we found that BKKBF use various strategies to disseminate their campaign to young generation. Social media is not primarily used to deliver family planning campaign to young generation especially in rural area where there is no internet signal. Many IG uh, Instagram accounts can be both advantages and disadvantages. 
BKKBN still need to optimize to utilize of their various IG accounts to make a more integrated campaigns. Next, Pak William. So this is the mood board, uh, the mood board of campaign of BKKBN to socialize to uh, Indonesian society. The key statement of BKKBN, the focus of communication is the younger generation. Then families and youth should plan a good family. Then the whole program must be able to be communicated through the younger generation. Then BKKBN puts itself as a friend in the middle of the happy family is a quality family. And then help is the main thing in achieving family goals. And final, the peaceful independent. Uh, before Pak Uyung, I want to mention before slide, Pak Uyung, okay. Peaceful, independent, and happy family. So this is the, the end of the goals, the primary goals of the KKBN, peaceful, independent, and happy family. Next, Pak Uyung. Okay, so uh, what should do next BKKBN that we want to maybe elaborate or we want to advise them? Because we find that the sharpen the target audience of its median. Even to BKKBN have many channels, it will be very difficult to coordinate all media. So we see that there are five accounts of Instagram. Yeah. And so uh, I think we uh, BKKBN have sharpened the target audience of its medium. Then calibrate media concept with communication target. And assist in preparing intermedia coordinating schemes. Because the role of official media as a content hub has not yet been felt. And uh, maybe the, uh, we want to propose a description of the media organization and rearranging the content strategy of the BKKPN channel and or maybe rebuild agenda setting through interdirectorate coordination tools because it will be difficult to carry out agenda setting if applied to all channels. And uh, BKKPN has to be um, the center of media, make a center of media to socialize and have the, the same opinion maybe uh, between Instagram account because uh, two of the Instagram account is uh, held from uh, handle from community, community, uh, generation C community. Okay, next, Pak Next, Pak Uyung. Okay, I think that's all. Our uh, research about the, what is the strategies campaign of BKKBN to socialize the program family planning to Generation Z. And this is the target because Generation Z is the, the future generation in Indonesia. And the future generation to make a happy family, to make an ideal family. And they have, they have to uh, prepare uh, from psychology and uh, biology so that we, uh, the Indonesian, have the ideal happy family that uh, goes of the Kakabe. Thank you very much. Um, Maybe any question we want to try to answer my friends properly. And here we are. Big group. Mr. Thank, you, Thank you very much, Bu Susi. Thank you. And the team. Okay. I think you have done a good research. Um, <clears throat> any question? Any question for Bu Susi and the team? Uh, I would like to ask. Yeah, go on. Uh, so my question would be, social media has not become a priority for delivering family planning campaigns as it is said before. And it is because of uh, no internet signals. So like which area in Indonesia uh, that there are no internet signals at all? Like, so is the campaign like not reached out to them? 
uh, yeah, that is all. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you, Gracia. Maybe my uh, I want to give opportunity to my friends to answer the question from Gracia. Okay. Sorry, can you can you repeat the question? Uh, I don't I don't listen. Uh, so it is said that social media has not become a priority for delivering family planning campaigns in areas where there are no signals, no internet oh, signal. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so which area are those? And how does the plan or the campaign reach them? Or is there uh, no campaign at all in that area? Okay, thank you. I'll try to answer. Uh, so uh, there's so many area that it's uh, internet access are very limited, but actually no, no, no area that, that Actually, almost almost all area in Indonesia have internet access. The problem is the quality. Some some area has the very low quality of internet access. So so uh, media social social media uh, is not the main 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 channel. Uh, we 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 can say the the rural area like Kalimantan uh, like Kalimantan Barat in in uh, also in. Papua, we can say like that. But but actually, uh, even in rural area, there there always a spot that internet are available, even in a poor 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 quality. The the main problem is just uh, I don't know. Maybe maybe BKPN need to to to. They still have uh what we said as ground attack. They have uh officer officer to 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 come to the field and then educate directly to the to the adolescents uh they they they, they rely more on that way rather than social media okay thank you very much you're welcome but uh uh pak Uyung, yeah um <clears throat> Yes, sir. What what are the alternative that they they use by the by the BKK BM uh, on those rural area? How to disseminate the information? Are they are they you know physically going to those location? Yes, know, that's by... what I mean. They have uh they have twenty three twenty three thousand of of PLKB. Uh, what is the English term? It's like a family planning officer, officer education officer okay. that 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 that, uh, that come to the fields to educate adolescents. Okay, all right, thanks. Across Indonesia. Thank you. What what is the definition of aerial attack and ground attack just now, Pak uh, Bu Susi? Yeah? yeah, ground attack is the their term, the PKKP in term of uh, field, field, or uh, direct, 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 direct campaign. Uh, the officer came to the to the location and then they physically, physically communicate with with the adolescents. That is the ground attack. And the aerial aerial attack is using the media social and media 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 like television, radio. They call it aerial attack. Okay. Uh, maybe I can I can add the the answer. Um, uh, they they gather the community from the social media. Then uh, the agent or the leader of the uh, like uh, genre can uh, interpersonal communication to to the area that uh, maybe cannot be reached uh, Instagram. Okay. Uh, from uh, your finding, um, it was shown that probably YouTube uh, is the the, the top most uh, application used. Okay, I think, and then followed by I, I don't remember was it. Yeah, there was there was it was shown in the in the in the slide just now. But is there any plan by 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 this authority to to also utilize other other platform other than Instagram? Uh, <clears throat> to use probably YouTube or any other channel uh, to dis disseminate this information to the to the general public. 
Okay. Is, is there any plan? They actually have YouTube, but actually the, the content of YouTube and Instagram and also Twitter is the same content. Uh, what, what is in YouTube is also in Instagram and also in Twitter. Sometimes the Twitter is to share the link of the YouTube channel and then something like that. So actually the content is not quite different. Uh, why, why we focus on Instagram? Because it's more popular uh, in, in, in area that... Mm. Mainly, mainly focused by BKKP, like like in rural area where the internet access is very limited. They they don't see, they don't watch YouTube because it needs more bandwidth. But but with Instagram, it's more light, so so many people can access with the limited internet access. Um, <clears throat> I I wonder how how do they they measure the uh, the effectiveness of this campaign. Uh, are they taking like uh, they, they collect the data <clears throat> like this campaign you are targeting like what is the size of the family uh, two in the family or three or the space within uh, three years or five years each is there a target like that uh, specified by the by this authority family planning authority i'm not i'm not sure about the variable but they uh have free every I forget two years or more. They have a family survey. They they hmm. have family surveillance, but I I'm I'm not sure about the variable. I have to check. Okay, they they they, they had the survey, but we don't know actually how, how far the the program is effective to the to the society, right? Uh, yeah. yes, it's hmm. it's just based on the based on the interview with the with the. Hmm. The, the the official that responsible with about it. It is the same in in, in Malaysia actually. Um, <clears throat> uh, in Malaysia they call it LPPKN, lembaga uh, perancangan keluarga something like that. <laughs> they 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 also have a program, but I think because maybe the internet <clears throat> coverage in 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 Malaysia is a bit more bad. It is better a bit. Uh, even in those rural areas in Sabah and Sarawak, uh, the government has uh, <clears throat> has installed what they call it the Pusat Community Internet, uh, Community Internet Center (CIC). Uh, one place probably the the Balai Raya or <laughs> Kepala Desa, Rumah Kepala Desa. They install the system there. They have uh, a satellite. And then they can access to the internet quite easily, but there is always one location in that particular community. For those in rural areas, you know that people in Sabah and Sarawak they live in uh, long houses and so on. You know, very deep into the uh, into the uh, into the center of the of the country. You know, so access is very difficult. <clears throat> so that's how we do it. So information is 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 getting there better. Uh, maybe in Indonesia there are more challenges that you have probably in the in the in the part of Kalimantan, such a large uh, you know <laughs> geographical area, <laughs> and then Papua somewhere you know. So the challenges are more basically from uh, Indonesian perspective to have that, and to do that also involve a lot of uh, <clears throat> a lot of money actually to set up those infrastructure. But I think the most important thing is there must there must be a measurement. Maybe there is a study a review. That they do in probably in three years time every three years you know to find the effectiveness and see how they can improve further with respect to this program uh, with uh, <clears throat> and how the the, the community and then and the public the society actually is is taking uh, or is actually <clears throat> looking at this uh, particular program some people especially the rural area look at this topic is a bit taboo you know uh, they don't want to talk about it. It's uh, kind of dirty, you know. Like, <laughs> so <laughs> that is also another challenge. <laughs> that is also another challenge. So <clears throat> they, they 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 try to avoid the subject. Okay. So any any other question about the internet center in rural area? We got a story from the interview. So in, in, in Kalimantan, in where, where internet access is very limited, they, they, just, they just did a, a poll with 
with so many nails there and they put their 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 handphone their phones out their, their <laughs> smartphone there so there are many many smartphones there they 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 they, they set the the different ringtone so they can know which who's 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 whose phone are ringing <laughs> but sometimes they ring uh yeah. Yeah, that's that's, uh, that's 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 what we are actually as a human. Yeah, we are. <laughs> we will always think how actually to <clears throat> to solve our problem, you know. <laughs> yeah. And we find we we are creative. Uh, we are creative, creative creatures, so called. So uh, we are we 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 are we are in we we are very instinctive. Uh, you know, we always want to improve the situation. We always want to achieve what we want to do. So no matter what. You know, you put a nail on the on the pole, and then so long you get the signal. <laughs> yeah. So for us who live in the city, probably don't have that problem. Never anticipate that problem. We have better access to all the infrastructures, but consider those people in the rural areas. You know. Okay. Thank you very much, Bu Susi and the team. Good presentation. So. Thank you very much. Can uh, we move forward with the Thank next one? Thank you very much. Uh... Mr. Zavi, thank you all delegates. Thank you for the input. Thank you so much. Uh, maybe we can uh, develop our, uh, or maybe we want to continue our research <laughs> that we found. I suggest, okay. I suggest uh, there's a lot of uh, potential for another research. So you can do another research paper actually. Uh, yeah. Because, yeah. because I, I, that's what I suggest. Don't, Whatever you have the paper, you complete this at this point, but you may have, you can actually write another papers that also can support your, <clears throat> your graduation uh, requirement, you know, <laughs> for, by having another set thank of you. papers, you know. <laughs> All right, from the Thank you very the much, okay. Okay, so next, I, I'm going to call upon uh, Dr. Grace Chan. Dr. Grace, Hello. are you ready? Yeah, let me share my slides. Okay, Let's thank you. See. So please take over the floor. All yours now. Yeah, I need to. Let's see. Dr. Chris, oh. uh, we cannot see your <clears throat> your face quite clearly. Maybe. Uh, let's see. Can you maybe able you to see the slides? The, the, the screen of your laptop. Oh, is it better? Ah, ah. Is it better? Hey, you look yeah. the same. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you look the same. Two years ago, you look like that. Oh, ah. yeah. Can you see the slides? <laughs> Can you all see the slides? Yeah, just share the, the slide, the share the screen. Oh, I think uh, I think I'm sharing right now. Can you see it? Um, yes. Can you see uh, it? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, very yeah. clear, very clear. Oh, thank you. Well, um, well, actually, this is one of the slides from our research grant projects. And um, unfortunately, most of the guys cannot be able to catch up this conference. So that's why I'm alone. <laughs> okay. We will, yeah. we, will, we will not give you hard time. No problem. Thank you. Yeah. Well, actually, um, well, uh, my topic is regarding to predict psychological benefits in green for airline passenger who affect organization corporate image to the switching decision. So we are talking about the theory integration as we well, combining marketing and hospitality. Um, when when is your last time travel, all of you? <laughs> Many huh? years ago, we forgot. About oh, it. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. But I, I knew that there were a lot of countries, sounds like that they not back to normal. Uh, but however, in, in mainland, especially in the Pearl River Delta area, or even though the domestic wise in mainland, more likely uh, we still can travel domestically. Okay, so, um, well, this research has been done, well, more like about one years ago. Um, however, because of uh, we have some uh, data collection problems, so this is the reason why, um, you know, we delay until at this moment, we, we still can be finalized, you know, all the result. So, um, well, many, many studies considerate, you know, about hotels, you know, airline service. It's a very common topic, but however, very, very few link with 
uh, green uh, marketings uh, in related to the psychological benefits. So um, that is one of the reasons why we craft these topics in related to aviation. And um, many airlines develop green corporate image, especially uh, right now, currently is under a big topic in Euro, you know, because we are talking about, uh, we reduce the carbon dioxide in the air, right? And also people, they, they, they are aware of global warm climate, so, um, or ozone uh, problems. So um, aviation have to take the responsibility, especially to enhance the brand image and also, how they can come up with uh, the brand relation uh, to reduce most of the customer, their switching behavior. So, um, well, the problem is, um, I wonder, have, have all of you been to Macau before? Did you? Mm. Anybody? <laughs> well, Macau actually, um, the stereotype image, which is a gaming city, uh, we're talking about, um, this is the World Tourism and Leisure Center. Uh, that is also one of the crucial hubs for uh, transport, especially in the Pearl River Delta. Um, there are a large numbers of discussions as focus on pricing strategies and revenue management, uh, more like focus in gamings and hospitality around the hotel. But sounds like that they are short of green approach regarding to uh, psychological benefits, especially this topic because of uh, one of the issues. Um, many city knockdowns and social distancing, all the uh, implement policy from, from, from globed. So um, that's why our respondent is more like focus on Chinese aspect. And also we can find uh, there were a large numbers of studies not related to this topic. So this created gaps in our study. Well, the objective is uh, based on four dimension, uh, which is regarding to psychological benefits. Uh, in green corporate image and aviation corporate image. And also we have to elaborate like um, the image and the relationship with green experimental satisfactions. And also uh, we hope that we can, well, exploring the effects of green lead to the Chinese passenger switching intention and provide um, uh, some of the suggestion to managerial levels while they can uplift their marketing strategies. And well, there were a large numbers of discussions in the literature review, which is talking about green marketing categories, just like rational choice, consumer choice, uh, execution, transitional utility theories, uh, they are widely discussed. And also um, over the last decade, well, some of the scholar actually, um, they defined well, six categories of the green marketing theory aligned with consumers, like um, value and knowledge, do they really understand? Their beliefs, attitudes, intentions, motivation, and social confirmation. And also there are very two common theory, which is what we widely adopted, which is theory of the region action, TRA, and also the theory of planned behavior, which is what we extend a little bit, you know, adopt this model in our study. Well, um, well, we just narrowed down to the psychological benefit. It's based on the three aspects, warm growth, uh, sales experience, and nature experience. Uh, this is the main two things that we would like to test the, the customers. Whether they are aware of these benefits will eventually lead them to um, create satisfactions and, well, switching intention. Well, the warm growth has demonstrated uh, some nice things overall uh, to wrap up the, the, the corporate brands, include, include, well, influence consumer psychological attitudes about the brands they use. Uh, sell expensive benefit, which is uh, based on signals theory, just like uh, when those of the customer, they use this brand, all right, uh, will they willing want to show off? Okay, and also they create this kinds of benefit to those of the buyers. And natural experience, which is studied um, in a lot of few, which is uh, aligned with uh, purchase intention. Well, such as like, well, they have this experience, are they really worth money? Or do they really create uh, some of the unique experience and also satisfactions to the users? 
So uh, besides combining with the psychological benefit of green aspect, well, um, we, will, we will focus on, we, we put the lens on, well, these uh, um, psychological image, well, um, do they have any relationship with the corporate image? Well, very early, some of the scholars, they believe that, you know, corporate Grace, images. Grace, yeah? Grace, can, I, can I interrupt? There's a, there's a question yeah. Yeah, from, please. from the audience, I think. Yeah. Uh, Which of I will ask yes. in, in the end of the um, of, in the end of the presentations. Yes, can you? Yeah, please. Oh no, it's okay. I will I will ask uh, after your presentations. Okay, Thank okay. You. So um, some scholar they believe that like subject feelings con converted to consumers, they really impressive and also how they present well how they. Uh, form the attitudes. So that's why the green aspect, well, uh, which is based on uh, the information about uh, what they choose the brand, how they use the brand. Well, green products also, also create uh, some of the experiential satisfactions, such as like pricing, all right, or even though some competency, whether they, you know, they can deliver like some of the positive outcome. And also, they are good for most of the salespeople. They can, you know, um, uh, um, uh, present well themselves, well as um, uh, create satisfactions with those of the customer or users. Some of the findings have the relevant perceived grim image of the hotel sectors, and uh, such as BNB, and also um, the test sensory experience, cognitive experience, rational experience, or some of the behavioral domains. Well, um, if we say that the switching intention, oh, well, there were two directions that some of the offers that they have different arguments. Some of the arguments say that, well, if they are satisfied, they won't be switched, all right? However, well, in uh, Matitu, you can see, well, they applied the definitions, which just come up with um, two different outcomes, which is customers stop buying the environmental products or they switch to the environmental friendly products, okay? Anyway, well, the switching intention will be drive towards the most of the um, consumers. They can create the market shares. Well, as, as the goal of the organization, as a result, well, they can make profit making, all right? And tend to be, they are more likely to remain or uh, retentions um, in, in uh, well, more loyalty to the, to the organization. Well, you can see this model, which is what we come up uh, based on the three elements of the psychological benefits. Well, how they related to airline corporate image and the image, how they create satisfactions and intention. And also we attempted to further investigate that the airline corporate image, they are aligned with the passengers, well, the airline switching intention. Well, um, these are the hypotheses what we has been um, list. The three, the first three part is based on the psychological uh, benefits, which is aligned with um, the airline green corporate image. And the hypothesis four, which is regarding to green experimental satisfactions and also the corporate image aligned with the switching intentions and also negatively influence on their airline. Well, uh, the methodology is what we're using is the quantitative research basis, okay? Uh, we're using online uh, survey because of under uh, COVID-19. So we contact uh, some of the um, marketing uh, aviation uh, company, well, um, in order they can help us to distribute some of these questionnaire to their loyalty members, which is we're using to convene samplings. Um, totally, we sent 615 uh, questionnaire, and the response rate has almost come up 92 percentage. And all these respondents were just uh, more likely they come from China and Macau. And before we have the data collection, uh, we run the pilot test, okay? And based on the pilot test, according to the author, which is more likely they think that around 30 to 100 will be more relevant. So this is the rationale why we're using 100, well, uh, samplings to do um, the, um, the pilot tests, okay? And uh, well, the items, what we score is under the seven point likelihood scales, uh, based on the relevance, um, what the measurement items is with relevance uh, uh, supported. And the uh, um, data analysis uh, we're using is SEM POS, the smart POS, which is um, the version is 3.31. Um, we 
we are first attempted to measure the reliabilities and validities. And second, we would like to check the casual relations uh, between various constructs. Well, the uh, discussions you can see, what well, the table well one showed the compact values range from, well, uh, because of the slide uh, have limit size, so that's why we separate with two slides, okay? Well, the, um, the range is from 0 0.936 to 0 0.65, and all the data exists the criteria. That's indicate high levels of reliability of studies. Okay, and apart from that, well, um, the factor loadings uh, and CR of each item is greater than the fat holes, which is talking about 0 0.7. Okay, so in this uh, in this study, the factors loading range from 0 0.895 to 0 0.956. So the CR rel, uh, range from 90954 to 0 0.971. So which is the data all meet the standard. And also the second things we check the discriminative validities. Okay, so um, well, in in these tests, that's confirmed is all satisfactions level discriminate validities, and if you see the summarizations of these slides, uh, which as you can see, the six hypotheses, well, they are included, well, uh, four are being accepted, but there are two is being rejected. Well, um, the hypothesis two and hypothesis three are rejected, which is um, they have discrepancy between the period scholar what they mention, and the green outlines copper image have a significant and positive effect on the green experimental satisfactions. So therefore, you can see that uh, hypothesis four is also accepted. And uh, overall, now just come up to uh, wrap up the conclusions. Well, the warm globe has a positive relationship with the airline culprit uh, image, and self expressive benefits and natural experience do not support it, which is what they have discrepancy from the period study, to which I mentioned about. Um, one of the argument reasons, maybe the Chinese culture backgrounds in education was differentiated between the Western world. An airline green image have a strong relationship with experimental satisfactions and the relationship of green experimental satisfaction to passengers wishing intentions was fully supported. So the demonstrated um, is crucial, the corporate image is important to those of the users and buyers. And the benefit strong green image, such as rum growth that may be affected airlines corporate image, leading to the Chinese passengers in green experimental satisfactions. Well, um, airline should have a strong image in a warm growth. Okay, so that's a, uh, the cause and the relationships with passengers switching to those of the warm uh, green airlines. Okay, so this is also another benefit. They can create the satisfactions and also create a strong image. Well, that will be a, a, a you know one of the important weapons. Okay, in, in the marketing. Well, uh, we, we analyzed there were two implications uh, in the study. The theoretical implication is the warm globe um, is the main predictors of uh, club, uh, airline corporate image. Well, uh, for those of the uh, respondents, the rate psychological benefit in green is one of the crucial assessment of the airline. And also we identify the airline corporate image. Okay, um, well, if they have strong image, they create more satisfactions to the passengers in green. Okay, so more likely they can switch to the green airline. So we suggest, okay, uh, we can elaborate in the future. Uh, maybe we can extend the theory based on the psychological benefit and aligned with um, Chinese passengers, all right, in related to the green products. Um, and third, investigate for the uh, purchase decision making. In the practical wise, well, um, I think most of the managerial levels from the aviation, well, they can think about how they can create awareness of warm glow, okay, and make more contribute to the eco-friendly products to uplift their, 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 their image. And also passengers need to be updated by those of these marketers 
okay, what kinds of benefit, okay, and also well, airlines need to understand what is the rationale behind of the psychological buying decisions in in the aspect. So um, in the future research, we may able to find uh, we can take a look uh, maybe between the Western and Chinese aspect, or we can well because of um, uh, uh, limited time limited and also um, um, the climate of the COVID-19. So that's why we focus on the segment group in Macau. And well, of course, well, um, the small population cannot be able to apply to the geographic area uh, in the Macau sections. And peer study, we can based on the mixed method approach, right, to be uh, to, to reduce the bias of the study. All right. So um, this is the things that I would like to share with you. All right. Thank you for your listening. So you can raise the questions. I'm so welcome. Hello. OK. Um, yeah, please. Uh, uh, thank you for your presentations. Uh, I would like to ask. Uh, this is uh, this question is based on my uh, curiousness, but uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, the Green Ireland is um, that you uh, talk about is referred to uh, Aircraft that reduce carbon uh, emission, am I right? Or uh, I'm sorry, can I hear you? Can you can you repeat again? Oh, uh, the green airline that you uh, said in this uh, in this research is yeah. uh, refers to aircraft that um, uh, uh, reducing carbon emissions, am I right? Uh, and in, also in the um, the low are... factors uh, based on the. Um, uh, based on the literature reviewed from Co and Touch in 2014, so um, the green airlines is defined by aircraft emissions and also effect by the aircraft low factors. The low factor that means the capacity and the fuel efficiency oh. and carbon destiny configuration and the surface frequency. So this is how we come up to define the green aviation. So, so it's not like a part of a go green movement. Not, not uh, well, we, we we are based on the, the literature review. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, that's all. I just I just wondered because this is a different from 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 what I study. So I just wonder. Yeah, um, that's a, you can just go back to the general co and to in two thousand and fourteen. Uh -huh. So you may able to find the definition. Mm -hmm. Can Can you explain a bit on the load? Load factor, which is one uh, of low the factors. Oh, yeah, low yeah. factors. Uh, that's just the terminologies in, in revenue making. Like, um, in hotels, they have we call the occupation. All right, mm -hmm. uh, so that's is what we call uh, the, the occupancy rate. Uh, but in airlines or aviation, they call the low factors. The low fact factors is based on uh, the configurations of the airline. For example, um, uh, uh, just example, the Air Airbus A380, okay, their low factors may be more than 500 passengers they can go on board, okay. So this is what they call the low, okay, which is aligned also their revenue. Let's say that, well, the hotel, maybe they have to achieve like uh, a, a, a certain occupancy rate so they can gain the revenue. But in aviation, they don't call occupancy, they call the low factors. Okay, how do you relate the load factor with the uh, with the green? Uh, with the green, yeah. yeah, because of you know, uh, if the capacities that like um, uh, large aircraft, okay, their loading will be uh, quite large. So uh, what they use the fuel uh, mm. would be even more than an Airbus because Airbus configuration may be talking about 100 to 200 people. So, well, small aircraft, we, we more like, we think that they are more green approach because they use less fuel, okay? Large aircraft, maybe they're loading, uh, well, it's, it's a lot. So that's why they use fuel will be even more. So this is the reason if they use more fuel, well, you can imagine, so it's, it's create the damages of the envir uh, environment. So this mm -hmm. has come up with their correlations. I see. Yeah. <clears throat> the load. So can we safely assume that if the load factor is higher? Yeah, uh, the load the factor is the, higher. The, right. The, exactly. The less, the exactly. less, the less exactly. green the airline is, right? Yeah, right. Uh, we have some of the literatures has been mentioned about uh, if you are a green, green travelers or a 
sustainable travelers. So you have to traveling with short haul flight, not the long haul flight. Okay, long haul flight because you can see uh, existing 10 hours, all right, or mm -hmm. more likely 12 hours, even though 15 hours. So they can create a lot of, you know, uh, pollutions and also the carbon dioxide in the air. So that's a small like uh, we encourage the green travelers using short haul travels instead of a long haul and short haul travels. We uh, make the criteria is talking about five hours less we call the short haul travel and if the flight existing five hours more that's a long haul what we classify mm. okay so this is a more of a talking about um cost effective am i right or it is like uh, a receptive this is, concern this is, of the environment uh that's just not cost effective this is more like about um the uh psychological benefits oh. or feelings you know to the customers what we investigate it's nothing related about the cost um okay. yeah i have another uh, uh research which is talking about uh compare with asia and non-asia well uh well for for non-asian travelers actually uh even they spend more um they are willing to try the green uh you know uh, airline, uh, but compared with non-Asia, they have different perspectives. So this is nothing related to to this issue. But this is only about the psychological benefit. Okay, um, more like the cross the theory integrations. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Can I ask a question, uh, mm -hmm. Doctor Grace? Yeah, yes. please do. All right, and then uh, well. Uh, actually, I would like to hear how did you conduct your research, you know, um, because hmm. you, you mentioned before you did a survey, right? Yeah. yeah and then yeah, you, yeah. Uh, yeah, also you did it also online. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And how can uh, you distinguish about, so it's more about, because uh, this yeah, issue yeah. is, is not, it's not an easy, uh, it's not, a, you know, it's not an easy one to, uh, to right, be understood, exactly. I believe, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and and, and yeah. more, more moreover, we talk about the uh, the passenger, you know, and yeah. everything, you know. Then it's not yeah. only we talk about the airline itself, you know. Then right, exactly. My, yeah, yeah. Okay, my understanding in here is, um, uh, did you target uh, your uh, uh, respondent more mm. uh, to the passengers mm. uh, rather than the airlines company itself? Well, or, mm, 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 mm. yeah, okay, uh, right, right. Yeah. Yes, uh, let me please, please. Uh, well, yeah. basically, yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, okay, you may answer. Uh, that, okay, uh, yeah, right. yeah, actually, um, you know, um, what I mentioned about, well, um, uh, this research has been crossed over more than one year already. <laughs> Oh, okay. All right. Well, unfortunately, one. yes. Uh, uh, before the COVID nineteen start, I have been raised this proposal, and actually, this proposal is being accepted in our research grant. However, mm -hmm. after uh, what uh, what we list all the questionnaire, unfortunately, uh, at that time, China looks so serious, mm -hmm. and there are many cities knocked down. So that's why we hold a little bit, and then the grant has been suspended, and we are worried about we cannot be able to do further. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. uh, we cannot be. Able to yeah, do yeah. the wrap up you know <laughs> and then right now because of um you know um um seems like that um the um um the pandemics is under control in in some of the region okay luckily in macau uh we have a very very uh, you know um uh um tough you know precaution so that's why um the uh the research has been reconduct again uh in in about more like six months ago so we are trying to allocate our target response uh by we invite uh some of the, because of we have some of the uh practitioners aligned with our faculties maybe they have come up with a good relation so that's why we sent uh, those of the uh, questionnaire through um, the airlines marketing department and also we using um, uh, the questionnaires uh, we have the filtering questions uh, whether they try they understand the topic green airline or not have they ever tried with the green airline and also consent form uh, has been yep. uh, delivered uh, to the marketing department. So that's why this is how we coming up, uh, filtering our respondents. If they know nothing about the green, so we were, we were trying to 
stop the uh, well, um, uh, well, stop them to to fill the questionnaire. So this yes. is how we go do the filterings to identify yes, yes. our potential respondent uh, to minimize the bias. Yes, thank you, Doctor Grace. But a little bit, maybe a little bit more, mm. if you don't mind, yeah. I would like to uh, more explore about this. Yeah. Um, yeah, because I because my 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 thought is more about the qualitative rather than the quantitative. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I I do have a belief, you know, is a uh, when we talk about the green issue is also related to the attitude of the people. All right, so it's mm -hmm. not like it's not about the campaign itself, you know. Uh -huh. And when we talk about the attitude about the people, uh, well, uh, mostly because I also mm -hmm. uh, because I used to, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, it was about you know to to to, to make a, a research about this, but in more mm. in the uh, uh, qualitative rather than quantitative. Yeah, because yeah, my yeah. my focus in here is uh, yeah. mostly I can say uh, to the Western airlines, you know, Western mm. airlines, you know, right, you know, uh -huh. uh, they are concerned more about this issue rather than uh, Asian airlines. You know, right. Because, exactly. Uh, exactly. Yes. Yes. Because yeah. that is my 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 understanding, and it yeah. would be. Uh, also fruitful okay maybe uh, if you also combine later on maybe you develop mm. your research with uh, either qualitative uh -huh. one because that mm -hmm. also um, uh, become more fruitful for the readers mm -hmm. you know in, yeah. in terms of understanding about you know yeah. how the airlines you know try to implement about the concept of the green issue itself because oh, uh, they might yeah oh. they might also uh, somehow insert this issue in the, uh, their CSR programs, I believe, right? Mm, mm, mm. Corporate yeah, yeah, social yeah. responsibility. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah. All right. Uh, that, that's all from me. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you. Dr. Thank Chris. you for your uh, thank you for your uh, suggestion. I will try to work out on this topic. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Which so is much. really good. Because in general speaking, um, uh, one of the challenges is still under COVID-19 pandemic. So um, Somehow, when we craft the topic, we consider it. Um, do we able to do face-to-face, uh, -face well, or mm. uh, we use, using uh, online distribution um, to, uh, you know, to minimize the splitting around? Uh, especially, um, even though in our classroom, I don't know whether in in Asia or other country, um, we periodically we do have some governmental, you know, uh, people will check it up whether we can still remain the social distancing. Yes. Uh, and, and, and also this is one of the um, problems that if we contact the um, uh, in-depth interview and also we, yeah. we uh, you know, well, our, our major students actually, apart from Macau, is many of them yes. come from different regions in China, especially from North part. Well, somehow um, uh, 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 we, we find that they have cases still very serious and uh, we we trying to update uh, you know, to, to make some precaution. So this is one of the limitations that uh, in this study, we cannot did make it. But uh, if, well, um, um, uh, if the pandemic is, is being sought out, I think that would be a great idea because of last study, what I compare with Western and, and uh, you know, um, uh, well, non-Asian and Asian, uh, how they perceive towards to green, you know, but I think this is a very nice suggestion. Thank you for your advice. Um, I'm sure the, I will dig into this research base in the future. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, guys, uh, any other questions for Dr. Grace? Any questions? Any? No? Thank you. Thank okay. you for if your you have, suggestion. We have towards the end of the session, all right? So um, okay, I, yeah. I would like to thank uh, Dr. Grace for the presentation. Thank you, Dr. Sari. Yeah. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank so you. So I now move forward to Dinara. Are you ready, Dinara? I'm ready. <laughs> okay, Dinara, uh, please take over the floor. You're next. Okay. Okay, uh, I will start. Okay, so first, good afternoon, sir and ma'am, ladies and gentlemen, and the committee of PICM 2021. My name is Dina Ferga from Polita Harapan University, and I am the representative of my team. I want to explain much further about the paper called The Use of Cancel Culture to a Social Awareness on YouTube. Next. Mm. Cancel Culture. 
The existence of technology can cause many changes, especially in human relations. The use of social media can have a positive impact, especially in terms of expanding the scope of communication with others. Also, to provide awareness to the public so they can be more up to date with the latest information. Next. Okay, so there are 4.55 billion social media users worldwide as of October 2021. From that, we can see that social media has now become part of people's daily activities. In Indonesia, 94% of people in the age range of 16 to 64 use YouTube. YouTube is a platform where users can upload videos which can be accessed by other users from all over the world. Next. There are actually so many types of content in YouTube and one of the most popular content in YouTube is mukbang. Mukbang refers to the activity of the host eating online. They tend to eat massive amounts of food on camera while interacting with viewers. These YouTubers can have a big influence on their subscribers who watch their videos, like increasing the appetite of the audience, for example. Next. So one of the most influential mukbang YouTubers is known as Nikocado Avocado or Nicholas Perry. However, with more mukbang YouTubers emerging, the competition between mukbang YouTubers to gain popularity get tougher and sometimes unhealthier. For example, Nikocado has verbally bullied fellow mukbang YouTubers. As a result, Nikocado Avocado experienced a phenomenon called cancel culture. Next. Cancel culture itself is a tactic of trying to remove someone from public discourse by public shaming, deplatforming, or demanding that they be fired. The cancel culture that befell Nikocado Avocado is a form of social awareness of YouTube social media users. Next. From those problems, we can discuss much further about how can cancel culture can be used as, a, as an effort to build social awareness on YouTube social media. Next. So this literature review used to support today's research. So the first one, cancel culture, is an attempt or tactic to remove someone from the public, remove someone from their job, humiliate someone opposed in public, and to be fired or submitting totally. Second one, deception theory, is a message signals that are consciously and intentionally sent to make others believe in false conclusions. Third, we can know that social awareness is a person's ability to understand and recognize the conditions of others in the detail at a certain time, as well as the awareness of a person to cultivate a sense of caring through the ability to empathize with others. Next. We can also know that bullying is an intentional aggressive behavior done repeatedly from time to time. One of these types of bullying is cyberbullying. Cyberbullying usually occurs online, which can be verbal or written, and can contain threats in the form of images, videos, or audio. This type of bullying can be found on various social media, and one of them is YouTube. Next, uh, and YouTube uh, before. To the next slide. YouTube is also a video sharing app, like we know, and allow users from all over the world to watch video posted by others and upload on their own. YouTube content can actually be educational, entertainment, political, historical, medical, or even personal. And lastly, we can know that social control is also a social institution that plays a role controlling the behavior of community members so that social life remains in a state of conformity. Next. In the research, uh, the author uses qualitative research, which is case study. We use qualitative research because we can explore the information related to the research question in more detail. And also for this research, we mainly focus on the case study of Nikocado Avocado that has been canceled by so many people, including our informants. Next. So the prom the primary data source used in this study was in-depth interviews with social media observers, Dr. Firman Kurniawan, who is an observer of culture and digital communication at the University of Indonesia as a key informant. And perpetrators of cancel culture against Nikocado Avocado is Maria Angelia, Vanessa Graciela, 
Kevin Pangaribuan, and Rati Kusma Wardani as informants. In-depth interview is a method that consists of dialogue between the researcher and the resource person using flexible interview question and equipped with follow-up questions, result of investigations, and also comment. This method allows the researcher to collect open data to explore the thoughts, feelings, and belief of the informant about a particular topic to delve deeply into personal and sometimes sensitive issue. And also, we use secondary data sources in this study, consisted of research journal, journal articles, and writing from internet and media related to research on cancel culture, social awareness, deception theory, bullying, and also uh, YouTube social media. Next. We use non-probability and proposes sampling. We use non-probability because the sources needed are not many or least in number, while purposive sampling is used because as authors, we have known which sources to select, support, the case well and the, and the theory use. Data collection in the study was obtained using in-depth interview with the informants. The tools used to conduct the interview are Google Meet and also voice recorder voice recorder. Also, the social media we use is LINE, WhatsApp, and Instagram, and also used to research tools to find sources who understand the case of Nicocado Avocado. And also, the author also conducted research observation through social media YouTube. Next. Qualitative data analysis is used to analyze the data we have. From the data the author has collected, it is examined using deception theory and the concept of bullying as well as can The results from interview were analyzed using the method of open coding, where we do reduction, classifying, and categorizing of the data. The, the data was classified and categorized in two main ideas, which are how cancel culture can be told to build social awareness and the role of subscribers in exercising social control over YouTubers. According to the definition of cancel culture, which is the tactic or way to try to remove someone from public discourse, we found that this definition is supported by an answer from Dr. Firman, who stated that cancel culture is a tendency of human nature. When an individual likes an individual, they tend to be loyal to that individual. However, if the individual disappoints, they will stop liking him or her. According to the informants also, cancel culture is, can also define as an event that is usually experienced by public figures when they are canceled by their fans. These public figures will be rejected and this result in them losing jo their jobs or their fame. Cancel culture also is a result of the social awareness of the community. In this case, Indonesian individuals toward uh, a YouTuber. Nikocado, avocado. Cancel culture can be used as a social control, but it will not be fair because in digital world, often there is only one way communication, which is usually in the form of comments from the society towards public figures. Cancel culture can certainly build social awareness because of the similarity opinion between people. However, this awareness does not always product produce a positive effects. Cancel culture can be a serious consequence to bear. If public or individual figures are not very careful with their words or behavior, especially in social media, the community can easily build social awareness together to cancel public figures or an individual. Next. To validate the data, we use the triangulation of source method. Triangulation of sources is used to observe the case of Nicocado Avocado, also to compare the results of interview with existing theories. The author collects the data based on people by conducting in-depth interview with one key informant and four others informant. Dr. Firman was chosen by the author as a key informant because he is a social media observer as well as an observer or of cancel culture of culture and digital communication who is of course very close with these various cases related to the cancel culture that arrive in social media Meanwhile, Maria, Vanessa, and Kevin were chosen as informants because they are perpetrators of cancel culture against Nicocado Avocado, while Rati was chosen as an informant because she followed the case of Nicocado. Based on the research question, how cancel culture is used as an effort to build social awareness on YouTube social media, we concluded that cancel culture could be, could be used 
to build social awareness because it is social control for public figures and also individuals. Based on the result of interview obtained from Dr. Firman, cancel culture actually can happen to anyone, especially through social media. Cancel culture is also a form of social awareness carried out by the community. As defined by three of our informants, these are some people who voice their awareness so that they can attract more people. Our informants agree by canceling, it is hope that Nikocado can fix his condition first so that he does not harm himself or the others. However, there are also those who do not condone cancel culture because they consider it is a cruel form of social control. According to Rati, society should not cancel Nikocado Avocado. Next. So the results of the interviews that the author conducted show that cancel culture can actually increase one's social awareness and can also be a tool of social control in the use of social media, especially YouTube. Based on the findings above, the result of the discussion will be divided into two parts, namely. First one is how cancel culture can be a tool to build social awareness. Based on in-depth interviews that the author conducted, it is shown that cancel culture can be used as a tool to build social awareness. Because according to the key informant, cancel culture can also have a positive impact, such as by encouraging social awareness of the community. So each individual must be more careful in using social media, especially YouTube, because something that has been published through social media will easily retrieve because of digital traces. The existence of cancel culture makes the community or someone more aware of someone's behavior. The author conduct concludes that if there's no social awareness, there will be no cancel culture. And if there is no cancel culture, then some public figures or, uh, or uh, role models will not be careful in matters of influencing audiences. This can result in damage to the society. Therefore, cancel culture is important as a tool to build one's social awareness. The second one is the role of subscribers in, a, in exercising social control over YouTubers. The author has collected, in, collected informants as perpetrators of cancel culture against Nikocado Avocado. From the results of the interviews, the author has conducted three out of four informants agreed that Nikocado deserves to get canceled because of his lying and bullying behavior. They directly canceled Nico by publishing comments in Nico's YouTube channel, unsubscribing, and also supporting action and content that canceled Nikocado Avocado. They did this because they hoped that Nikocado could change for the better. According to these informants, there were many behaviors from Nico which they considered abnormal, disturbing and unethical. He is willing to bully, manipulate, and deceive viewers in order to attract attention and maintain a good image and maintain a good image. From this, it shows that viewers have strong social control over YouTubers. It can be shown by determining the character of YouTubers who are controlled by subscriber. If the character of YouTuber is bad, many subscribers will unsubscribe, making them try harder to maintain their image so they don't lose subscribers and remain uh, popular. Next. Okay, so to conclude the research presentation today, cancel culture can function as a tool to build social awareness in society. It is shown that a person will be more aware, especially on social awareness, on social media. On social media, there are still so many role models who often have bad influences on the community. This certainly deserves to be corrected to improve behavior that was previously bad for the better. Subscribers also have an important role in exercising social control over YouTubers. It is shown that if there is a bad behavior given by YouTubers through their video content, such as bullying or even lying to manipulate their subscribers and viewers, subscribers and also viewers will immediately post comments and unsubscribe the YouTuber, which forces them to finally change their behavior from what is negative to positive. From this, it has been seen and proven that subscribers in the realm of YouTube have an important role in exercising social control over YouTubers. Next. Okay, to end the presentation, I would like to thank each one of you very much for listening today. Have a great day and thank you. Is there any questions? 
Have a Pretty question. Good topic. This is okay. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead first. Uh, no, I, I just have a suggestion for your future research. I think um, uh, cancel culture is a very interesting topic. So um, in your future extension, I would say you can just go for it. Quantitative research is what is the motivation of cancel culture in mm -hmm. compare with gender perspective? Usually female, uh, some of the research has been highlighted female, which is more influenced by social media platform more than male. So therefore, um, if you want to take on your future, um, future research, I would suggest maybe you can more elaborate with the motivation of the con, you know, cancel culture compared with uh, male and female. This is what my suggestion. Mm. Thank you so much for your suggestion. Thank you. Uh, uh, this is sort of an interesting topic. Of, yeah, uh, cancel culture is it's like protesting to the YouTubers, to the content creator for something did it wrong. Uh, yeah, I, I see more on the, uh, the negative uh, effects uh, of the cancel culture, but is, is there positive effects to the, to the YouTuber? And maybe for the future, yeah, I think if we can find a YouTuber that can experience cancel culture, uh, culture and we experience what is uh, happening with them, I don't know. Uh, did you have an uh, interview with the YouTuber for, for, this, uh, for this research? But maybe if not, uh, at least in the future, we can add uh, like uh, we know the perspective of the YouTuber, how to be canceled uh, in their, in, in their uh, members here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. my question is actually, is there any positive uh, to positive uh, side effects for the content creator? The positive effects, actually, uh, the content creator can be very carefully, like, uh, publish their content. Like, they, they need to be careful because after they post it, there's also a digital trace that need. Uh, that cannot be erased. So they need to um, really publish the qual the quality of the content should be uh, not having a bad influence to others. So actually, I have I have seen a lot of YouTuber have a really good content, and they also gain a lot of subscribers. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, I, I, have a, I have a simple question. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, uh, most YouTubers um, uh, have their subscribers, and this cancel culture actually come from initiated by the by the subscribers, I think. Yes, it's um, true. But then again, the YouTubers themselves actually can can delete the the subscribers from uh, from from the account, you know, or, or can so-called quote unquote kick out the subscriber <laughs> you know so my, my 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 point is basically we probably need more than just one subscriber to put in the cancel culture or to remind or to advise you know the youtuber but we need a lot more than just one so that um, the message get through to the youtuber because the the owner of the account can actually delete the the, the comment you know uh, before the other subscribers have the opportunity to read the comment, if something that is uh, so called, uh, if the YouTuber doesn't like the comment, you know, <laughs> that is also a possibility. So I do not know how effective it is actually, but based on your study, based on your research, I think it is effective in a way uh, to. Um, to put so-called the uh, YouTuber back on the right track you know? <laughs> while maintaining the sanity and also the um, uh, the behavior so-called, you know, with respect to the content of the YouTubers. Okay, so to answer uh, the feedback, actually, 
uh, yes, YouTubers can delete the, delete the comment of the subscribers, but once that his subscribers already screenshot and it will actually leave a digital trace that can be traced. So yeah. it's actually, yeah, can give a really bad impact if the YouTuber have a bad influence on people because uh, people can also screenshot or maybe video recording while he was live or any other of that so even though he already deleted the comment but it's it's actually already um remain in people so yeah it's actually already recorded then hmm. yeah uh, already recorded so people can actually uh see hmm. the bad sides of the youtubers and it's uh, it can also affect the youtubers actually Okay. I would like to give a little bit comment about this. I would like to tell everyone probably about uh, because I I'm also in this team. Why I think this is quite uh, uh, the idea is quite fresh, you know, because nowadays we are all uh, in Indonesia. Yeah, we are all concerned about what they call it the issue of digital literacy. However, the the approach that the government used talking about digital literacy is, if not through the education institutions, probably, uh, you know, uh, through the campaign. That's 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 my concern. And uh, when the first time Perga came up with the idea, I think it is good because uh, uh, cancel culture is more about uh, uh, how the people feel. This is more about the the people, what do you call it, or like the people initiative, you know, to 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 to, to give a control on using the uh, you know uh, social media and everything. And nowadays in 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 a digital era, I think it is very important uh, to build the awareness come from the society itself, you know, because that is the what you just the, the I would say that is a strong will and stronger rather than. If we try to educate the people, and this is uh, quite uh, interesting, and the idea itself that uh, she brought up is quite simple actually. When the first time, it's about the food uh, 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 YouTubers, and I think, <laughs> yeah, that is why what happened. I, I myself, to be honest, uh, didn't know about what happened with this because I'm not very familiar with the, you know. Uh, uh, with the the, the the current issue uh, happen in in the in the teenagers and everything, and then uh, Perga told me that oh this is, a... however okay because of the competitive uh, situation nowadays uh, from the YouTuber influencer endorser or whatever they call you know so that things that that behavior become uh, quite significantly uh, annoying, uh, so that's why the the way to uh, somehow the way to tackle uh, that kind of behavior. So then uh, Perga come out with the idea of cancel culture. I, I myself, to be honest, I, uh, I myself just knew this concept not too long ago, I think for two months ago or something. And I would be very grateful uh, with the suggestion of Dr. Brace, uh, which asked uh, for the motivation. And I do believe this is very good because uh, first come first, I think we have to know what is, uh, you know, what is come up uh, in the in the in the thoughts of the sus of subscriber? You know why they they want to do the subscribe? I mean, sorry, the cancel culture itself. There, yeah. so I think this is quite. Uh, I think it's quite challenging for 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 the future research. Uh, yeah, that's that, that, that's all from me. I give a little comment. Yeah, thank you, uh, Doctor Sam. Thank you, Doctor Sam. Uh, any other? Uh, <clears throat> Questions or comment or feedback? I have a question. Yes, Diana. Okay. Uh, I have a question that you are mentioned about cancel culture can force someone to change a behavior. Yeah. Uh, from your case study, <clears throat> uh, do you think that uh, Nico Nico Kado? eventually uh, change the behavior behavior after the experience can cancel culture. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you for the questions. Um, from article that we've read, 
Nicocado Avocado actually has lost million of followers and on the bright side because of the cancel culture he actually do not bully any others youtuber again because from his recent case with Stephanie Su he lost a million of followers but sadly some of his behavior still remain like eating more unhealthy food and would use personal problems to raise views some people speculate that he has a mental health problem and really hope that he okay. can get a professional help after the cancel culture evac he didn't bully any other youtuber anymore but still needs to seek for help for himself to be the better that's <laughs> okay <laughs> interesting uh, oh by the uh, way how many how many subscribers one, does uh, oh. uh nico kado has actually how many subscribers actually now i think it's around it's still around two to three million but he used to have like Seven, seven, or six. Oh, wow! <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure he he lost he lost a lot of money because yeah. of yes. monetiz monetization. That's uh, wow! Well, seven million subscribers. That's a lot the of biggest risk, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's the biggest impact of yeah. the cancel culture is losing exactly. money. Exactly. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Dinara. Uh, can can we move on next one? Um, the last speaker, Dr. Ahmad. But then again, uh, Dr. Ahmad has got two papers. Yeah, I hope we can we can all bear with him for the next uh, 10, 20 minutes or so. You know, for for him to complete his presentation. Dr. Ahmad, are you ready? Uh, thank you very thank you very much, uh, uh, Dr. Mr. Ahmad. We don't, we don't see your 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 face. Not so uh, handsome. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Dinara would like to see your face. All right, not so handsome, really. <laughs> okay, now come back. See me, see me again. Ah, huh? oh, you look handsome. <laughs> okay. All right. Let me... All right. So the topic is about uh, in silico. So again, the same, the same methodology or the same uh, method. So these are focusing on uh, even wider sam uh, sample or candidate. So using the same uh, has to be genes but uh, this more or less about uh, uh, this approach i mean using the same approach then all right okay so the one i didn't did not mention about the, the genome of uh, hpv so there is a wide range of uh, hpv uh, genome so this is called the genetic material belong to this uh, hpv so which uh, uh, i mean consists of uh, numbers of genes but i'll focus more towards the e2 E3, I mean E2, E6, and also E7 uh, genes eh, for this study. And then again, the study is focusing on the high risk and the low risk uh, group of candidates for this uh, study. So, yes, I may skip a few uh, slides. So, this got the uh, same thing. All right. So, this again to look into the role of E2. So, this uh, additional uh, it, uh, protein that we are looking at apart from the previously mentioned during my uh, uh, my presentation uh, about E7 and also E6. So this is uh, the, co the connection between E2. So this is responsible to uh, promote the promotion of replication uh, initiation complex through uh, E1. So this involved in the synthesizing of another uh, protein uh, belong to HPV. So you call it uh, E1. And then again, I did mention about E6 before. And then E7. All right, so the aim of this study just to extend a bit about uh, using, I mean, uh, to look at the additional point, uh, this protein E2, instead of uh, focusing on E6 and also E7 earlier. So, all right. Okay, the same approach, like before, means, means that combining by uh, virology approach and also this uh, uh, in silico technique means that using bioinformatics, okay. So by uh, by uh, extracting information from these databases or integrated databases, which is NCBI, All right? So this is the interface as usual, and this example of the comparison, the sequence uh, belong to normal and also the mutant, and so the one that being uh, uh, highlighted, the one that affected, I mean the the sequence, the protein sequence that affected. So compare between the normal sequence to the mutant one at the bottom. All right, this is uh, the, the view uh, using RASMO, okay? 
and how it is being quantified by using the uh, value, we call it the root mean square uh, deviation in short RMSD. So using a deep viewer uh, software. Okay, the result that you're focusing on uh, my third presentation uh, this afternoon. So from the E2 uh, analysis, I mean, uh, result that we obtained, so this uh, being reported about numbers of mutation that occur there, but this by ascension of uh, four candidates uh, from uh, HB types here, from the low risk one, so we have uh, E6 and also E7, E11, and also for the high risk one, the candidate here, uh, 16 and also uh, 18. And we, we found that the numbers of mutation that being reported, so through the, the literature that we, we researched there, and the, the things that we observe here in terms of the RMSD value, okay, obtained uh, by looking at the E2 uh, uh, SQL or protein. So this slightly no difference in terms of the RMSD value that we observe in uh, HPV types 11 here. The rest, uh, I mean, they got a, ver a, a slight, slight variation, I mean, uh, in terms of the RMSD value that obtained uh, when you look at in uh, one one was look into the HV type 16 and the same thing goes to the 18 so this is quite, quite uh, comparable in terms of the RMSD value that we obtain by comparing between normal versus the mutated that observed here in two places in uh, HV types 18 right and for E6 okay E6 so same thing look we look into it uh, the only thing that we unable to see any result found from uh, for the HB touch 11, but the rest we may find uh, the number of, I mean, we found that the number of uh, location where this mutation occurs at various places there throughout the sequence of uh, E6 proteins there. And then uh, in terms of the RMSD value, so this uh, slight variation there we, we observe, so about uh, 0 0.03 uh, unstrong in terms of the difference compared so, but uh, no, uh, no functional functional effect that we seen from the the literature set that we obtained. I mean, uh, through the, the reading. I mean, through the article that we 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 research. So, same thing goes to the HB types eighteen. So, the the figures uh, comparable with the one that we observe in the low risk one. So, HB type six. So, zero point zero three. But in this case, uh, we look into, I mean, by looking at the article that you uh, serve, so they, they, re they reported that the, they may cause to this uh, deficiency to stabilize uh, P53. So this is a kind of uh, tumor cell processing protein that uh, affecting D2 uh, as a result of this mutation happened at uh, this uh, HB types 18. Next. So this is uh, in uh, E7. So E7, uh, we found that uh, the the mutation hop happen occur. So by uh, changing the at the position of uh, 22 uh, in the HB6, so the lower risk one, but uh, very high level of variation. Though they, uh, I mean, we found that about 7.86. So as strong, so it's, it's quite uh, significant different in terms of uh, effect of mutation to the structure. And again, uh, by looking at the uh, published paper, so in, as a result of this mutation happened at the E, uh, I mean, uh, this E7 on the HB types 6. So this increases the binding affinity to retinoblastoma protein here for the degradation. So this illustration about uh, the interface showing that the position where this mutation occur so at the at the position of uh, twenty two, so the twenty two, so where the the MCC residue there, so glycine, and then uh, replaced by the uh, as aspartic acid at the same position there, right? So now we want to the in the, the condition where I mean the the scenario that we observe in HUV uh, eleven, so another kind of uh, uh, low risk uh, HUV. So this uh, result in uh, the RMSD value that you observe comparing uh, between uh, the normal to the mutated one. So at two places, so at position number 58 and also 90, 91. So the replacement of uh, this uh, residue, okay, and then change the location to, I mean, localization to nuclear. So this is what will be the effect observed or reported in the article uh, 
uh, happen or occur in the HPV type uh, 11. So this uh, schematic representation using a RASMO to visualize uh, these two position. So 1658, uh, 1691. And uh, this, uh, call it uh, the one that being seen, and also the, the position that being replaced here, which uh, call it, uh, just show about the chain B here. So about alanine uh, to replace the 1691, whereas this alanine 58, okay? So to replace the system. So this is the same the same uh, call it, uh, image presentation using RASMO. So next, uh, in high risk one, so our candidate here has to be type 16. So the location that we are observe here at 58, so the 16 being uh, clearly replaced by this alanine and the same, the same uh, effect to that. So they change uh, localization to nuclear. Okay, this is the position observed. All right, and the last uh, candidate here uh, has to be type 18. So the position uh, affected. So the system changed to uh, to another residue. But this is like a uh, pretty, uh, I mean, uh, such change in terms of the RMS value compared to the, I mean, compared to be, uh, uh, between the normal, normal or wild type uh, E7 versus the mutated E7. So this uh, may result to the good stability and also anti-genicity, okay, uh, to this uh, effect, I mean, developmental effect to this uh, condition due to mutation. Now, uh, part of the discussion. So taking in, uh, into account and uh, a few uh, call it, uh, article that uh, call it, uh, being I mean, searched there and then how they may con I mean, uh, discuss about this condition. So for example, from the first paper that we I mean, listed here, so Paris et al, 2006. So this uh, mentioned that uh, the mutants are the only induced apoptosis event in the uh, HPV cell but this is a treatment of the cervical cancer and also other heavy related diseases. Another one uh, papered by Nadini, 2015. So this uh, reported that uh, mutated oncoprotein so uh, showed uh, remarkable therapeutic benefits so to, uh, as a result of this uh, condition. And the third papers, I mean, from, I mean, by Pang and Terry, 2016. So this is about uh, uh, describing uh, the E7 and also E6 on coprotein. So this uh, may uh, have a uh, benefit in terms of uh, creating or uh, this, producing this uh, therapeutic vaccine from that. And next uh, paper, uh, 2014 by Zo and, and uh, et al. So this is about uh, describing uh, HPV tax uh, 18, even though they the same, the same group, uh, high risk HPV so in uh, uh, two oncoprotein here, so E6 and also E7. So these uh, uh, have the potential carcinogenic uh, and also oncogenic site where this uh, carcinogenicity is necessary to eliminate uh, the genetic mutation. Okay, and if you look at uh, the position where uh, very high uh, value or significant uh, difference in terms of uh, result comparing between the mutated versus the uh, normal sequence. So this has been model based on the RMSD value that 7.86 here. So this uh, mutation uh, site located at this position 22. So you may uh, narrow down, I mean, uh, for the study on this area. So this is our interest uh, right now. So this is about the glycine and also aspartic acid. Okay. So this is uh, observed in HB6 and also E7. So this is a uh, very high, I mean, very significant difference in terms of the, the, the shape or the, the structure of this uh, protein of, uh, I mean, being studied then. Okay, and then to conclude uh, my third presentation here, uh, the mutation effects on selected HIV uh, were relatively independent of protein structure change. It means that if there you may find uh, the, 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 the RMSD value that may vary, so they may not really uh, give us very conclusive uh, 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 evidence to show that mutation may have a very adverse effect, even though they got a slight change in terms of structure, or they may give a very significant difference in terms of the structure. But again, so we may look into, or we may also look into the 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 one that being reported from the article that we searched. 
And then we may suggest uh, talk the finding from this uh, collective study, the mutated mutation, mutation uh, sequence selection must consist of more than location of mutation because uh, I said, so since we are, you, you are, we are utilizing the freeware, when there's still, uh, there's still a limit in terms of uh, coverage to model those uh, sequence that we have, uh, I mean, obtained from the database, and then to model those uh, uh, sequences and make it in uh, make make it a more convincing result in terms of comparing those uh, structures. Then, all right. So these uh, the references are the main selected one, and we move on to the very last uh, presentation of me and also for our colleague uh, delegate today. So this is the last one and the last topics. So right, the title for I mean for the last topic here is about uh, discussing map. So asking whether is there any association, the one that been discussed earlier about uh, Pax9. So so this is about another genes, MX1 genes, and if there are any point mutation observed, and they may have a relationship with a tooth age disorder uh, disorder in the tooth formation. So we look into uh, the result that obtained, but this uh, using the same approach, meaning that using the in silico. So in its in silico approach, yeah? Where uh, this, I mean, just to note about the, the meaning or the division of this, what mean by point mutation. So this involved in the uh, one or single base uh, change or replace either by the process we call it insertion. So insert uh, one uh, base nucleotide into the, the original sequence or by del uh, deletion. So to delete one uh, base pair uh, uh, or one base, uh, base nucleotide, so from the sequence or by substitution or replacement. So this may result to the changing in the, I call it the, the coded uh, protein or the coded uh, amino acids from there and the result to, to this uh, call it effect or point mutation there. So they may result to the, the one that mentioned um, from the, my previous uh, presentation. So they may either change tremendously the, the shape of the protein itself or they may slight change in the, in, in, in the, the structure of the protein. So we look into it later. Now, uh, by division, so this point mutation being divided into uh, the measure one being called as a transition and the other one a transversion. So just to add in here in what meant by this transition, so the changes in terms of the type of uh, bases. So they call it the pyrimidine uh, bases. So they got the three candidates here, cyto cytosine, thymine, and uracil. And this uh, if transition, you call it the, the replacement uh, between the same uh, group or means the, the same types of the primidine base. So primidine change to primidine uh, and then uh, vice versa. So uh, purine to purine. Okay. So this is a candidate for purine uh, bases. So they call it uh, adenine and so guanine. Yeah? Uh, whereas uh, the second type of uh, mutation, they call it transversion, means that uh, the replacement of or the deletion or uh, insertion happen or occur in between. Oh, sorry. So in between the, the types of uh, bases, so between uh, pyrimidine to uh, purine, what's besar? So we get C change to A, or C A change to C, and so forth. So means that they, uh, they, they're interchangeable uh, between these two uh, type of uh, bases. So pyrimidine versus, uh, I mean, uh, pyrimidine versus uh, purine, what's besar? All right, now looking back to the MX gene for the topic uh, for my last presentation today. So this is about uh, the genes that located on the human chromosome, chromosome number four. So for human, so we have uh, 23 pair, dual eh? 20, 23 pairs of chromosome. The first uh, 22, so we call it autosomal chromosome, that uh, the one that being asked by Dr. Shafi uh, earlier, my earlier presentation, if the mutation happen at the autosomal chromosome will be possible that this disorder being trans being uh, inherited to the next generation. So this is very unlikely. I mean, the, uh, uh, less chance uh, for this kind of disorder being 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 uh, inherited to the next generation or for the offspring or the the your, your I mean our son or our daughter. Uh, so this means that this chromosome number four so belong to the autosomal chromosome, not the sex 
sub chromosome X or Y. So this uh, used to indicate that posi the position where this uh, MS gene located, okay, they call it uh, a locus, okay, the locus where this MS gene lies on the chromosome number four. And in the bracket here, to indicate about the position where this uh, MS gene located, very specific, like, uh, like uh, for example here, so we have an address, alamat, eh? alamat rumah, so something like that. So this is being called as an address for this gene where it is located. So at the upper arm, so P is the upper arm, so the short arm of the chromosome because this chromosome uh, uh, has uh, two arms, okay? So the upper arm, you call it P, and the lower arm is a longer one, so they call it, uh, they call it the Q, P and Q. So this is to indicate about, about the position the position of these uh, genes on the, on the chromosome number four. And this composed of the two exons there, so containing uh, 912 bases or base nucleotide that forming uh, this MS gene or encode for this MS gene, so, and then the amino acid, okay? So this is responsible, the MS gene are responsible to the process of embryogenesis, of course, to be focused about the tooth formation. So if they got a mutation happen or observed in the MS gene, so we may expect uh, numbers of uh, disorder related to the tooth formation. So the one that we mentioned from my earlier presentation about uh, PEX9, okay, PEX9. So same thing goes to this MS because they are uh, interrelated in terms of the, the effect to the process of uh, budding, pro budding stage. Sorry, okay. So these are the same, the same slide I mentioned from, I mean, for the, for the uh, PEX9 earlier. So this, just to look at about these uh, genes or this, pro this protein that be encoded by this gene, MS1. So this MS1 uh, maintain the mesenchymal uh, expression, so BMP4 expression, and then uh, this also involved in the controlling the by uh, signal back to the epithelium and so forth. So this is how the interaction between the three uh, genes that be expressed either MS1, PEX9, and also BMP. So earlier I did discuss about the PEX9, now uh, the involvement of MX1 uh, here, that being uh, being uh, controlled the expression by uh, uh, by the BM, BMP4 here, okay? And then this release uh, numbers of effect to that, okay? And the one that mentioned also uh, before about the disorder in tooth, tooth uh, formation, okay? So the hypodontia, oligodontia, and also the anodontia here. So these three uh, condition, of course, this is, not, not, this is not normal due to the effect of mutation that occur at this uh, uh, level. I mean, uh, these uh, uh, genes that being being, being uh, mutated here. Now, so this, the description about the hypodontia, oligodontia, and also anodontia, so this kind of uh, disorder in tooth uh, formation. So for example, for the hypodontia, so this uh, image of uh, someone with this, uh, kind of disorder in tooth uh, formation here. So this is uh, a con congenital, so it means that happened uh, at the early age, I mean, uh, in the, uh, what's called it, uh, in a kid, in our kid. So congenital missing uh, deciduous or permanent uh, uh, tooth. So uh, so they may involve in a uh, number of uh, teeth here. So excluding the, the third molar, so this the, the, the position of our tooth. So of course we have, I mean, for normal individual, we should have, um, uh, what's called it uh, teeth? I mean uh, the, uh, the the teeth that we have. So in uh, e I mean equal number, both. I mean the 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 the, the uh, what's called it the, the top one and also the bottom the bottom here. So we should have a number num uh, equal number. Okay, and then uh, for the oligodontia, so we have a missing teeth uh, exceed the six teeth in in this case. So exception exception on the third molar again. And the last one, so the, the third get the third effect to this condition, so the uh, anodontia, so this complete absent all this. So we'll see from this image or this uh, 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 photos, so about the someone with anodontia, so the absent of uh, teeth here. Now, again about the in silico approach. So again, this one is a dry uh, lab activity, so in front of the computer. So as long as we are using the freeware, so the software is free, so no need to subscribe and so forth. So no need, uh, don't have any, I mean, subscription, not, uh, not uh, required to have a subscription. So this is a free for uh, scientists worldwide. Then uh, objective, of course, targeting to MS1. And then uh, specific objective, the only different compared to the my previous uh, presentation. So just replacing uh, PX, PX9 to MX1 here. And then we expect the mutation uh, that re being reported uh, 
to this uh, max one gene here, so make more possible alteration, and also what we'll see, I mean, observe from the reported article, so about the biological impact, and we compare with our own, uh, call it the uh, outcome from the from the from the what's called it the compositional uh, analysis done on the sequence that being modeled. Okay, so same thing here. So the thing that uh, deeper this one, eh? so the candidate, so MX1 gene that we are focusing, the range will be similar. And the results, okay. So the result uh, we managed to uh, obtain or get uh, the model. So model uh, call it the one for mutation number one that you observe that involved in the location of the whole sequence of three zero three. So within this uh, length uh, of the sequence, so 173 until uh, 230. So we managed to get the, the, the first model here to represent the mutation number one. And uh, <clears throat> another one, so we have uh, the, the model which cover the area of 172 to 228. So this is a summary of uh, the one that being reported from the article there, but uh, the one that we are looking at or to model the, the, the structure for comparison purpose to compare between the normal sequence versus the one that being mutated. So this is the one that being presented at various location from uh, 40, I mean, at position of 40 residue until uh, 205. So this is uh, the range of uh, mutation that occur in between uh, the structure of uh, MX1 here. And uh, the very last column to represent the effect, I mean, the body effect. So they call it the phenotype. Phenotypes is the, the term given by uh, geneticists to represent that abnormality that, or not abnormality, the, the features that we, we may observe by using our uh, naked, naked eye. So another term that being uh, called it, uh, used by geneticists, so the uh, phenotype and genotype. Genotype cannot be seen. So this the genotype hidden, the features hidden inside the gene itself. I mean, uh, these uh, call it, uh, two terms that being utilized by uh, geneticists uh, to represent the what, call it, the condition that we may observe to, do, to discuss. Okay, so phenotype can, uh, could be seen by using our naked eye. So this one, uh, the one that being reported as a result of the various position where mutation observed. I mean, where mutation that being uh, reported here. So what can see then is some of them uh, no significant association in terms of the mutation occur. Okay, some uh, similar means that uh, no change at all, like this one. So glycine to glycine. So at the same position, one, 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 six. So some they may call it change to different type of uh, call it residue, I mean residue from, as a result of this mutation happen. All right. So this uh, schematic representation is showing that uh, the representation of uh, comparison made uh, at that particular position where the one that being labeled, the position being labeled here. So the one uh, like this one in uh, the leucine position number 205. So glycine 195 and so forth. So this is uh, the one that being shown here, compact. The one that being labeled as model is a normal or the wild type one. And then the one that being presented here on the, on the right. So this is a mutation where exactly the replacement uh, between uh, glycine at 195 to proline eh, to uh, uh, 195 and the same thing goes to the rest. All right, so this uh, superimpose, the one that mentioned from the previous one, this uh, uh, in separation means that uh, these two 3D structure, so they put in separation, but now we superimpose uh, both structure in space. So this uh, uh, call it uh, wireframe presentation to show about the superimpose uh, between the normal the normal and versus the wild type one. So the, what we see uh, from this diagram illustration. So where the yellow, so this to show the, the model, I mean the, the wild type one, whereas the red color, okay, the one that we seen uh, by this uh, representation, so red color to represent the mutated. Eh? And then uh, the one that being shown in the blue color to locate the position, exactly the position of uh, mutation where this occurred. Now, the outcome from this RMSD value from, I mean, by comparing uh, this model, I mean, the, the wild type model versus the mutation, okay? So what you can see uh, by uh, referring to the RMSD value uh, epsilon, the unit for this comparison by using epsilon means uh, the, the epsilon is a 10 to the power of minus, uh, minus 10 uh, uh, meter. So the distance, so this is uh, very, very tiny, I mean, very, very, very short, okay? So they're being visualized, I mean, being, being, being measured, eh? so 0 0.09, slight uh, 
change in term of the shape there by referring to the the, the carbon alpha and the other uh, uh, kind of uh, comparison could be made by using the backbone so means that uh, looking at the structure to structure uh, i mean 3d structure being being compared in space so how is being calculated by using uh, deep viewer uh, uh, software eh? now about the discussion uh, looking at the rms value that uh, being uh, observed i mean uh, from the calculation match uh, using uh, deep viewer so we obtain uh, uh, we, we, uh, we compare the uh, the literature that we observe and then the impact the biological impact to that so what you can see from the the three uh, position from this uh, it, uh, diagram or this uh, table so uh, rotation happened at this uh, it, uh, position so uh, this uh, location just to show about the numbers here 614 just to represent the position of uh, DNA so the position of this uh, base nucleotide on the DNA and this paper uh, published uh, in 2015 by Yamaguchi and uh, Kalik and this reported that the biological impact at this position so they may uh, the result in uh, what's called the transcriptional separation activity done by MX2 especially at the location I mean at the stage of uh, at the body stage of the tooth formation and another uh, call it, uh, uh, finding uh, and they reported by uh, the same paper so Yamaguchi and Kalik so 2014 so this is also I mean but this at the different position so the position happened at the different position for the position on the DNA 521 so this substitution that caused uh, the replacement of this MC residue there and then it's affecting the transcription uh, transcriptional uh, suppression uh, activity done by MX1 too and the last uh, 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 papers that I mean being selected here so by Wong and Click 2011 so this uh, the effect of this substitution so they may lead to this uh, alteration where the DNA binding simplicity and the manner of the in interaction with other transcription factor throughout the process of uh, uh, but I mean at body stage uh, of the I mean tooth formation uh, in terms of the remissive value observed so they may vary depending on the the one that you one, the one that we obtained from our our study here, so they vary from 0 0.01 to 0 0.28, okay. And the highest will be here, so the 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 one that being reported by Yamaguchi to the impact, but this one uh, result from our from our study, so 0 0.9 as uh, strong. Okay, so to, to conclude, before we end up uh, for this, I mean my presentation also for this uh, afternoon session. So to conclude uh, these findings, so point mutation that we observe in the MS1 uh, gene so may cause change of amino acid residue. And then we may expect also the possible uh, about the changes in the structure of this uh, MX1 protein. And they may vary depending on the RMS value they observe from the study. And also this may, also, uh, may, may or may not have a relationship with the ability impact uh, based on the comparison made from our finding to the one that being reported uh, through the literature. So in terms of uh, the tooth formation, how they may affect to that. So therefore, um, uh, our further, I mean, uh, the potential for the further study on this aspect. So we may add in a, a few things in terms of uh, getting more and more as usual, eh? getting more and more templates for, I mean, for a wider, a wider coverage of the region of the, sequ of the sequence we may model the structure in full. So hoping that we may get a better it, uh, representation of the result from the model once we make a comparison. And also uh, we, we may also, uh, also hoping that uh, we may get other uh, supporting article for the recent, this recent discovery from this uh, finding in relation to the tooth agencies process. So with that, I'll end and uh, thank you. And then uh, over to you, uh, Mr. Chairman, Dr. Safi. Simple question. The latest yeah. literature. Yeah. Um, I noticed is I think 2015 or 2016, like that. All right. Yeah. Uh, is, is there any uh, literature that you can find later than 2015? Uh, for time being, we managed uh, to get to capture till 20, uh, 2015, uh, Dr. Safi. Oh, I see. So we, are, we, are, uh, we are planning to, uh, I mean, also because this. Uh, what may say that uh, if there are any uh, the most recent article, so you may add in. Uh, 
Oh, basically there there are no no recent article later than 2015. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. So I'm not sure whether the people not really interested about this area yeah, I mean, for using the comp the, comp the, the, the computational is, biology. Is enough, yeah. yeah. The thing that we are uh, we are touching about the mutation. So uh, I mean, uh, there's still uh, still uh, we need uh, to explore more about the mutation. How the <coughs> the impact of mutation. The one that being I mean you, you asked your question earlier. I mean during my first yeah. presentation about how I mean the the source of mutation that may uh, call it, uh, interfere in terms of uh, changing the structure of the protein of interest. So, so they may call it, uh, lead to this condition. The question is, is that how far the, the severity of those uh, mutations that may result to the changing in the structure and also the biological, biological impact to that particular protein of interest. That's another question that will, I mean, yeah. you need to discover more. And uh, one one more question: the RMSD value. Yeah. At what cut off point basically we decide that the the uh, the the what do you say the value is uh, significant uh, or yeah. the value is not significant so called. There's not a statistical value to, to, to be honest because it's not statistical uh, calculation made. So this is a kind of a cal calculative. So, but uh, based on the previous uh, correct, uh, article that being, I mean, being studied in terms of the composition of biology, so the cutoff one basically we we set uh, more or less about a one point zero zero. So this is uh, being considered as a cut point where we may conclude that is highly significant. I mean, you know, slightly, but uh, relatively moderate, uh, moderate in terms of the difference in term in terms of comparing uh, between structure to structure. Yeah. So since uh, we have a limitation in terms of the full coverage of the sequences to be modeled, so therefore I may say that there's still a need to uh, create uh, further in terms of uh, getting more and more uh, template to be to be to be selected in this uh, kind of uh, uh, project or research. Then. So in order to get the, the full length of the sequences to to, to be modeled, but as long as uh, the coverage of this area just targeting to the mutated uh, the mutated area or the mutated uh, sequence so therefore this far enough for us to make a conclusion so how will be the effect to that particular region and this being supported by the article that we search in terms of the one that being reported how will be the effect to the mutation and the one that being reported. we didn't do uh call it uh, the kind of uh the one that i mentioned is is not, it's not uh, I mean this is a compositional study. It's not related to the one that being done in 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 the real labs. So this is uh, the the dry lab activity. So mean, means that we rely with the the information from the database. Yeah. So if database uh, I mean uh, provide us the complete uh, complete detail about that. So they therefore we join to I mean link together. So bring together in order to 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 conclude our our result or finding then. So this is my, my answer to that question, uh, Dr. Safi. Okay, thank you for that. Any any other question from anyone? It's been a long day, quite. Okay. No questions. All right then. Um, <clears throat> thank you, okay, Dr. Thank Ahmad, you. for, okay. for your Welcome for your you. presentation. Okay. Thank you. Thank you uh, I guess we are coming to at the the end of this uh, session. Okay. Um, so before we part, actually, I would like to again thank you very much for collaborating with us. Um, <clears throat> uh, I hope we can uh, find some something to learn, something new today that all of us can learn. Um, I hope that the research. Uh, all the researches that we, we have done over here can be uh, can be <clears throat> okay if we are if we if, if it is possible can be commercialized so called <laughs> or can be made into practical use by the society that is the most important thing right but as we know uh, research is research not all actually our finding will be will be of practical use in reality uh, <clears throat> or can be commercialized because um, for us to be able to do that actually there are other factors so that we need to consider at, at the end of the day but this does not mean that we should reduce our intensity to continue our research and come up with the 
quality research. We have to continue because this is our role, this is our responsibility in the academic field that we have to continue doing research. That's why, uh, especially for those in the university as academic staff and so on, there are requirements, okay, for, for, for you basically to submit maybe three researchers a year, okay? Two has to be published, to, uh, two papers to be published in high index journal. <laughs> One maybe on the reference journal. You know, they comment like that. They, they, these, are, these are your KPI actually. So, so we have to continue doing research. We have to continue doing research, you know, uh, uh, <clears throat> irrespective of what the, 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 the outcome, but the research, the study must, must continue without fail, right? Even in, uh, during the pandemic, COVID, the research must also continue. So we have to find a way how to do that and uh, we have to continue non-stop, okay? So again, thank you very much for your participation. It's been a long day, I understand, uh, but uh, I'm very excited and all of you also excited. I hope we, 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 we cross paths again sometime in the future, whether melalui dunia maya, dumai, ataupun face-to-face <laughs> uh, -face when we have the opportunity to meet, you know? Yeah, very soon. <laughs> very I may, soon. I may come. I, I may. I may. I may have some collaboration with some university in Indonesia. It's nearer to you guys, especially from Indonesia. You know, to come over and you know you can present your paper if you have, and then we can have like a one time we have a mass kind of a publication of papers in journals, whether it is a refereed or high index journal. Okay. okay. Thank you very oh, much, everyone. Doctor. I wish Dr. you all. Yeah. Uh, before that, I want to ask about um, the best paper procedure. Uh, how 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 oh, is the okay. procedure? The best, uh, the best paper. Uh, we will inform within uh, two weeks from today. Uh, normally, <clears throat> uh, during this pandemic, when we do this, like uh, uh, we cannot do face to face, we we send an email to the to the winner. Okay, and then uh, we also send the certificate. Okay, if the paper, if the paper has more than one author, every author will receive the certificate of the best paper. Okay, not only the main author but also the co-authors as well. And um, since we do this like online, uh, not real time, um, other participant. Um, do not know actually who the winners are. If we normally in the face-to-face -face situation, we you know we um, uh, <clears throat> present the winners actually during the conference before the conference mm -hmm. start. You know we give the certificate as well. There is a uh, a small plaque actually uh, to signify the, the 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 award, but we cannot do that physically. So in this case, we will send email to the winner. So those who do not receive, basically, um, <clears throat> your paper is not selected for the for the best paper award. Remember the best paper award, the 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 the, the condition in the in the website. Okay, you have to mm -hmm. submit before the, the before the deadline. Uh, you have to follow the the format. You have to uh, to have the novelty of your 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 paper, and then uh, the format, and then the number of words. The, the number of uh, word in the abstract and so on. So our reviewers are uh, <clears throat> putting all those criteria to select the uh, the best paper award. But understand the best paper award actually okay, sometimes, sometimes, but this doesn't happen all the time. We give best paper award for more than one paper actually. Mm. If we found, uh, you know, good papers, I think is we should not, uh, you know, avoid them from, we should not actually <clears throat> <coughs> deprive them of getting the, the award. So the certificate is also important, I think, to, to show your, 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 your work and your <coughs> product, productivity and the output, basically. So it's good also for, the, for, for, for you, actually, for your promotion, maybe, for your KPIs uh, <coughs> and your performance, uh, performance measurement as well. Okay, any other questions? No, thank you for your kind assistance. No more. Thank you, Dr. Grace. I hope um, I, I, I can physically meet you sometime in the future. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully I can I can travel. Right. So I'm looking forward actually to 
to to physically meet all the participants rather than having to meet mm. over the virtual uh, environment like this so where mm. we have a better interaction we can sit down and have a lunch together you know after the after the mm. conference <laughs> sure. okay that's okay. always been the case all right thank you very much Thank you. Thank you, doctor. Thank you, doctor. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. One more. All the best and stay healthy always. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, thank you, doctor Ahmad, doctor Grace, and everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. The Bye. recording will be will be emailed to you. Uh, I will oh, share okay. the recording, the 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 video, but this is a long uh, long session. I'm going to break probably into two. Okay, the oh, video okay. so that is uh, in a small chunk. <clears throat> it's easier to manage, but I have to edit the video first. Uh, uh, I will only take the the major ones, basically. Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> so that it, right. the video doesn't take that very long. Okay. Thank you very much again. Right. Okay. Thank, thank you. To be able right. to thank you. you. Thank you. All the best. Okay. Thank you. All the best. Okay. And stay healthy. Right. Okay. Bye, everyone. Right. Okay. Bye, bye. everyone. Too.